playing in just their fourth bowl ever. A victory, though, would put them at 9-3, and three, and that would be their best ever since 1885. And from the AA Bowl game is a feature presentation of Minsloo Television Sports. From Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, welcome to the Peach Bowl. This afternoon, a classic matchup of two intersectional football teams as the University of Indiana meets Tennessee. This afternoon's Peach Bowl is being brought to you by the Paps Brewing Company, makers of Paps Blue Ribbon. Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. It is the Peach Bowl on a pleasant afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Ray Scott. By my side, a 30-year veteran of the coaching wars at the college and professional level, our analyst for today's game, Ed Biles. Ed, every time I see Southeastern Conference and Big Ten, somehow I say this is going to be a good football game. And then when you add the ingredients of Bill Mallory, who has turned the Indiana program around, and Johnny Majors, who has brought Tennessee to the elite of college football, I say, by golly, we've got a good one. What's your reaction? Well, we're going to have a good one. When you talk about those two schools and those two fine coaches, you know you're talking about two hard-nosed, fundamental football coaches, which means you're going to see some running game, an excellent running attack. You're going to see who can control the line of scrimmage. That will be the important factor today. Which offensive line moves the other off defensive line back off the line? Well, I know as a play-by-play -play broadcaster, I try to remember what number belongs to what player and so forth. What do you as an analyst look for this afternoon? Well, the matchups. I think the key matchup from Indiana's standpoint, where they can control Cobb, the very fine running back for Tennessee. A lot of big play players in this ballgame, though. Indiana has Ernie Jones from 27. His matchup against McMillan, the defensive back for Tennessee, should be outstanding. A lot of great individual matchups in this game, but it still will come down to which team commits the fewest turnovers. Okay, Ed. The third member of our broadcast team, a young veteran of broadcasting, is on the field, and we're going to go to Dwayne Dow right now. Dwayne. Oh, it's great working with you, Ray, and you too, Ed Biles. Well, the footing is firm. But there's some mud here, fellas. It rained all day yesterday while the sun is out now or has been here and there. And there is a firm footing. That mud is going to dirty some jerseys before it's over. One thing, boy, we've done a lot of football games, obviously, and you fans have seen your share. But they are really into this game, these spectators, the red of Indiana and the orange of the uh, Tennessee Volunteers. It's a game of partisan emotions. I don't think there's anybody neutral in this one. We'll be back. Wayne Dow, and welcome to the matchups. Brought to you by the Pabst Brewing Company, makers of Pabst Blue Ribbon, Hams, and Olympia premium beers. Oh, this is going to be a good one. The South against the Midwest. The Tennessee Volunteers taking on the Hoosiers of Indiana. Let's take a look at these two teams right now. Bowl appearance in the past nine years in tonight's Peach Bowl. On offense, junior quarterback Jeff Francis leads the attack. Francis is known for his last-minute rallies this season. Freshman running back Reggie Cobb carried the ball for 1,197 yards and tied the Southeastern Conference scoring record with 20 touchdowns. Thomas Woods and Terrence Cleveland lead a talented set of receivers who raised havoc with opponent secondaries. All-America, Harry Galbraith, he's a veteran offensive line. Terry McDaniel at defensive back has been a big play player all season for the Tennessee Volunteers. Defensive tackle Marion Hobby and outside linebacker Darren Miller also put plenty of pressure on their opponents. Now this. Thunderous applause greeted the arrival of the Tennessee Volunteer team onto the field, already represented by their co-captain, Harry Galbraith. Remember I mentioned earlier, sold out at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. That means over 59,000 are here on a very pleasant afternoon. Johnny Majors talking with uh, one of the officials. And let's tell you about the officials. John Sophie from the fans here. 
I am told that Indiana, for example, which has not been that, uh, that frequent a visitor to the bowl scene, sold out their allotment of tickets, Ed, on the 4th of December, almost one month ago. And Tennessee's representation here is really tremendous. So well, it's a great trip for both uh, the fans of both schools, Ray, coming down to Atlanta, Georgia, spending a few days down here. They've had a lot of festivities. It's been kind of an exciting week for both the players and the fans. And it appears to be a good-spirited rivalry between the two of them right now. Indiana will kick off. Now the starting offensive unit. The quarterback, Jeff Francis. His running backs will be Wilson. Kicking off for Indiana will be Pete Stojanovic. And we expect to see Cleveland. That's Thomas Cleveland, number four. And he is the deep man. So if the ball gets down around the five-yard line, you can bet it'll be Cleveland. Pete Stojanovic kicking off. So we're delighted you're with us. Indiana, eight and three. Tennessee, nine, two and one. Bill Mallory, Johnny Majors, arrival head coaches, and there's the kick. It'll be Cleveland at the six. Fifteen. Good run back. Out near the 30-yard line. 23-yard return. Now, we're going to tell you right now. When we have a close-up like we had there a split second ago, you saw number four going in there. Cleveland, the wide receiver. When we have a close-up picture, you'll be able to see the numbers of these Tennessee players. But when we get into that medium shot or long shot, these numbers are very difficult to read. So prepare for that. Cobb the deep back. Wilson the fullback. Francis under center to the air on first down. And there he goes to Anthony Miller. One of their wide receivers, a senior from Pasadena, California. Miller is one of their outstanding wide receivers. He's been injured most of this year. Last year, he was tremendous. He runs a 4-2-40. A lot of scouts, pro scouts around the country, Ray, think he might be just as good as Tim Brown from Notre Dame. He caught 23 passes during the regular season for over 400 yards and five touchdowns. Gain on the play, nine yards. Second down one, Tennessee 39. There's a good hole at the fullback. First down, 49-yard line for Charles Wilson, senior running back out of the state of Alabama. Well, Wilson, Wilson has been a really trench. Look at it coming right at you here now. Now, Wilson has really been consistent. Average 4.9 both years from the fullback position. Good hard-nosed football player. Tennessee thinks they have to be physical and control that line of scrimmage. That's an example of what they want to accomplish during the course of the game. Cleveland wide one side. Woods the other. Ooh. You mentioned about establishing the run and off the first couple of plays here, it looks like Tennessee is getting a good surge from the offensive line. Well, one of Indiana's problems this year has been rushing defense. They finished ninth in the Big Ten against the rush, so they had going to have to get those linebackers up in there a little bit tougher and a little bit tighter. Otherwise, Tennessee will just run that ball all day long. So Indiana University with a second down three at the 44-yard line. Or rather, Tennessee with the ball at the Indiana 44. Francis, a little bit of a fake. Another first down. This is Anthony Miller. Now, Miller and Woods and Cleveland will be alternating, and sometimes all three will be in. Well, he did an excellent job. Now, Francis did an excellent job. He fixed a little bit of the play action, but he read the defense correctly. Indiana playing zone. The outside receiver broke to the outside. And, of course, you can see how far the deep back was off of him. He didn't get any help from the underneath cover man. That's why he was so wide open. 12-yard gain to the 32-yard line of Indiana. Tennessee on the move here in the opening moments of the Peach Bowl. Gainable about four yards to the 28-yard line, and that was Reggie Cobb. Oh, what an outstanding redshirt freshman, Reggie Cobb. Johnny Majors, coaching at his alma mater, where he was an All-American tailback. Seven straight bowl games. Second down, and oh, a little bit, about seven to go at the 29-yard line of Indiana. Two wide outs to the right. Bit of a fake. Got a good block from Galbraith. A 
Now that time, that secondary of Indiana did a good job. Francis had nowhere to go. They did an excellent job. A little bit of a counter roll on action here. He fakes like the run's going one way. Now he rolls out to his right. See him coming right into your living room there. Receivers downfield. They had a man going deep. One man who was in the so-called middle area. But the tennis, uh, Indiana's coverage was just excellent. No place for him to go with it. Winds up with a loss. Three wide receivers. Third down 11 after a loss of four. 33-yard line of Indiana. Was it a catch? Yes, but short of a first down at the 24-yard line, short by a little more than two yards to Thomas Woods. And again, Francis did an excellent job of reading the secondary. Indiana sitting back in zone coverage. He looked to the strong side or to his left. Coverage was there. He came back to the side where the linebacker had the longest drop and went to the outside receiver. Now Phil Rich will try a 41-yard field goal. From the right hash mark, it appears to have the distance. No, just off to the side. So Indiana stops the first surge by Tennessee, and we are scoreless at the Peach Bowl. Right back after these messages. Hoosiers with the ball for the first time, and Dave Schnell is the quarterback. Take to his tailback, Thompson. Charlie McCraig did just an excellent job. The big, tall defensive lineman, six foot eight, 278 pound freshman defensive lineman, got that big ball up there and knocked that ball down. And he had a receiver open off to the quarterback's left. So it's second down 10 at the Indiana 24. Wide to the right goes Tony Buford. Second down 10. Tony Jones in motion. Thompson. Just as Tennessee has a great running back, a great tailback, and redshirt freshman Reggie Cobb, so does Indiana have a great tailback. And sophomore Anthony Thompson from the 29 yard line of Indiana. No score. Ready in the first quarter. Schnell. Going for Jones. He gets it there. put down by Terry McDaniel who will be uh, one of the, the only volunteer in fact in the East-West game. Well, Tennessee comes with a blitz now from the outside. The outside cornerback uh, blitzes from the outside here now. That really puts a one-on-one -on -one situation. They read it perfectly and of course the tight ends will be in from time to time for Indiana. Right now it's Terrence Sanders. First down at the 50. Fake to Anthony Thompson. Lots of time. He was going for Jones. But there was a little bit of a mix-up between receiver and passer that time. I, I thought, uh, Ed, that I saw Thompson make a little bit of a move to the inside, and I think that took him away from any chance of getting to that pass. Well, I think we're first possession. There is no score. 11.52 to play. First quarter. Those putbacks now. Pulse is now the fullback, number 34. Here comes the blitz. Great, great reaction there on the part of the defense led by Peppers and Kramer as he was able, Schnell was able to get the ball to Thompson, the tailback. That's the ball, a little bit of a delay coming across. They read the blitz and did a good job with it. Now, you see here now, now see him slide out of there and goes across a little bit late with the ball to Thompson. Now, but he runs laterally instead of upfield. He's going, kind of going east and west rather than north and south. He did make but about three yards on that play. Third down seven at the Indiana 40, at the Tennessee 47 for Indiana. Take again to Thompson. Thompson's out in the pass pattern. He has the ball. Short of a first down by about five. Schnell's been getting either good time to get the ball away or as in the case under the blitz, he was able to read it, as you mentioned, uh, right away. Yeah, that time they, Tennessee was very much content to sit back in that zone uh, pass, de pass defense and let it uh, complete the ball underneath and just make a fourth down situation, fourth in the punt. All right, it is punt formation time for Indiana. Pete Stojanovic. Well, oh, okay. 
I'm sorry. This is Straczynski. Fair catch. Signal. Touchback. 47-yard punt. Tennessee will have the ball and will be back after these words from your local station. Early statistics. Indiana was able to drive 32 yards before being forced to kick the ball away on a punt by Dan Straczynski. Tennessee on its opening possession moved 51 yards before failing on a field goal opportunity. So it's Tennessee moving from the volunteer 20 yard line. The wide receivers are Cleveland and Miller to the right. Moore to the left. So three wide receivers. Close to a first down. Thomas Woods. At that time they had Woods off to the one side. Cleveland and Miller off to the other side. Well, with, with the three wide receiver situation, what they're really doing is forcing ten, uh, Indiana's zone people to show and be split out awfully wide, which makes it difficult for the underneath people to go that far to get there. Exactly. Ten-yard gain. Francis is four for four. A great defensive effort by Van Waiters. The outside receivers, two to the right on second down ten. A little delay. There's Cox. Oh, boy. 45. Can they catch him? Yes. A saving tackle made by Brian DeWitts, or that would have been six points. The free safety, the junior from Massillon, Ohio. Boy, watch you watch this run by Kyle. Watch how he hits this hole. That's the old sprint draw. Now, once he gets through the line of scrimmage and sees daylight, makes a little move to the outside. Now he just turns it on. DeWitts does an excellent job of getting him by the ankle and making a tackle down there. But Sprint for all started out to the right, handed the ball back to him. He looked for daylight when he saw it. Hometown boy makes good from Knoxville, Tennessee. Well, that was a 52-yard run, and the officials, uh, I don't think, have the change set yet. So we have a brief delay. And by the way, our officials today, so long special New Year greetings to Lindsey Nelson, who's one of the true giants of the broadcasting industry. Well, he and yourself right fit into that category. Well, and I have a, along with Kurt Gowdy, and I have a, a, a friend right now who's uh, facing some surgery to get him back in top shape next week here in uh, Atlanta Hospital, uh, Danny Dahl, that I want to send along my best wishes to. But oh, what a, it was just marvelous yesterday to, to chat with Lindsey who uh, right now is at his sister's home in Tennessee. But he'll be back home, I think, in Knoxville in about a week or so. Well, that freshman, uh, red well, freshman we're going to have to wait about. a while for those chains to get squared away, so we're going to leave you, but just for a moment, for these messages. With that much time left to play in a scoreless first quarter, Indiana, first and ten. Defending against Tennessee. And there goes Cobb again. Big, strong running back. Picks up about seven yards on first down. Now, a couple of personnel changes here in this offensive line for Tennessee. Simon, 67, and Stewart, 63, are now the offensive tackles. Galbreath, 76, and Bruin, 75, are the guards. And Kirk, number 66, is the center. Now, mainly, Tennessee's been going with three wideouts, but now they do have a tight end in. So it's two wide receivers to the right, one second down, and a long three. Cobb again. No, not this time. Not this time. One of them, and also, you never get hurt with an inexperienced player because he gets uh, and gains experience. Joe Huff led the defensive charge, and then a Cobb to a yard. It's a big third and two at the 20. Huff. That's a first down at the 15-yard line. The Indiana defense. Schlera 54, Sams 91, and Bauer 55. They are the three down linemen. The linebackers are Huff 35 and Waiters 48, the outside backers. Money 53 and Willie Bates, a leading Indiana tackler, the inside backers. Pickerson, DeWitts, Hall, and Dumas, the secondary. First down, Tennessee. First down, number five for the volunteers. Here's Cobb into the secondary. If ever the phrase hard runner would apply and then add speed, that's Cobb. Boy, he's impressive. 205 pounder. Boy, is that shoulder hits off. Take a look at that from the ground. Now, this is what those linebackers are looking at. Just a toss sweep to him. Now, watch when he gets through there, how he lowers himself and gets himself low. See how low he's running there? 
Now you have to get underneath that to stop him. Otherwise, he's going to surge forward for an extra four yards on those running plays. Six-yard gain, second down for Indiana 10. 8.54 to play, score this first quarter. Goes Kyle. Slipped one tackle. But good, good defense that time by Walt Harris, a Detroit, Michigan defensive lineman. And Indiana came with their cornerback in the 45, Hickerson, on a cornerback blitz to kind of force him right back down into the rest of the people and be more success with uh, that type of defense to put the head earlier against the running game. Now a new tailback, number 28, Keith Davis, on third down, three at the nine-yard line of Indiana. Davis got a good block from his fullback. That looks like just enough for a first down at the five. They started just outside the 15 by about two feet. Again, it's just a sweep toss. Toss sweep going into the, into the uh, short sideline. And again, you can the Tennessee back doing a great job of lowering their shoulder and going forward for that extra yardage to pick up the first down. So our referee, John Sothi, signals first and goal. Tennessee now has marked up six first downs. Took the opening kickoff, moved to a field goal of opportunity, but missed the field goal. Indiana, after one brief surge, had to pump the ball away, and here we have Tennessee, first and goal at the Indiana 5, 7.50 to play, first quarter. Now, there's a little bit of a different play, but that was Charles Wilson running from what I call pretty much a full house backfield. Defensive charge, the right cornerback, and that's a loss of a yard. Second and goal, Indiana 6. Two wide receivers. There was a fine defensive play by Andre Hall, the junior. Junior from Flint, Michigan. Boy, just an excellent job by Andrew Hall. Drop back pass, he had three wide receivers. He tried to get the ball right there, but watch Andrew Hall close on the ball. Right there, made up about three. Oh, Francis, after hitting his first four, has missed on his last two, so he's four of six. But credit to Hall with a great defensive play. There goes Kyle. The first score of the game from six yards out. Reggie Cobb, the redshirt freshman from Knoxville. Well, they had the three wide, receiver, three wide receivers in there in the anticipating pass. And again, he ran that sprint draw, looking for daylight, finds it, and takes it in the end zone. Look how he uses that shoulder to ward off the so-called would-be tackles. Number 34, some pretty good football players have worn that uh, jersey number. That shoulder with 34 like Earl Campbell used to do when he played with the Oilers. Bill Rich will try for point number seven. And that is 41 of 43 for Rich in extra points. Tennessee leads 7 0. We'll return to Atlanta Fulton County Stadium right after these messages. Wide receiver of Indiana is in the middle of that threesome back there for the kickoff from Tennessee. By the way, the third member of that full house backfield for Tennessee when they were in that short yardage situation was Roland Poles. This is going to be Jones at the 10. 20. Look out. 40. Got a block. Is he dangerous? Can he fly? Well, he's the first All-American, first team All-American they've had in Indiana in the last 20 years, Ray. You can see why he was chosen All-American. Take a look at this. Now, what you've seen, that little bit of hole there in daylight, some pretty good blocks going in there. Number eight, Tony Buford is wide to the right, and Jones, number 27, is split left after a first down by Indiana at the Tennessee 35. Snell at the controls. Here's Thompson. Dwayne, Dwayne Dow, your guest. Get, we're on the Tennessee sideline. Anybody left back in Tennessee? Nobody. <laughs> Everybody could get a ticket this here. Yeah. Enjoy that touchdown? Oh, yeah. Love it. Cobb up the middle, all you need. <laughs> Volunteer mania in Atlanta. Hotline. <laughs> what about a Tennessee who's going to win? Yeah! Oh! <laughs> okay, Dwayne. First down run by Thompson, picked up three. Split 
back. Second down, seven. Schnell, pretty good protection. Inside the 25, and that should be another first down. And it's Mr. Do Everything, Anthony Thompson. Three or four ways he releases it. Five out of seven completions for Schnell. He still has the ball. Now there. That Thompson finally wound up losing some yardage thanks to stout Tennessee defense. Well, they just were the old down the line option play. When he made the pitch out there to Thompson, Tennessee reacted. Now they were all playing that man for man. One person responsible for the quarterback. Cornerback was responsible to come up and taking the pitch man. Played it excellently. Daniel did a outstanding job on that play. Terry McDaniel will be playing in that East-West game, which we'll be televising here on Mizzou Television two weeks from today. Second down, 12 after a two-yard loss. Pulse is to the left behind the quarterback, and Thompson to the right. Now, yeah, pretty good protection again. Not, it broke down just like that. Richard Cooper led the defensive surge that time, number 77. Well, take a look to the right side of the screen now, and you'll see Cooper come in there. He's number 77 with a rush from the outside. Of course, they realize you can take a little upfield move, and he came underneath to make the tackle. Now, the one thing about it, Indiana so far, when they've been in those split backs, they have passed every time. So those defensive linemen are probably thinking when they're in split backs, we can rush to the pass just a little bit more and ignore the running game. Successive losses of 2 and 9, 3rd and 21 now. Indiana to Tennessee 35. Tennessee leading 7-0. Boy, that was up for grabs. There was one Indiana Hoosier there and three Tennessee Volunteers. It was intended. Well, take a look at take a look. He's in great position to be wide open on the play. A little bit late here. Watch the volleyball bouncing around. The ball bounces once, bounces twice, bounces three times. Almost an interception by number 33 coming in there very up. De Long, long way downfield for that linebacker. Here we go. Look at this. Boom. Boom, all over the field. So now it is fourth down, and we're going to have a 51-yard or 52-yard field goal attempt by Stojanovic. Oh, what a strong leg. It's good. 52 yards. Three. Got a good one going, right? Oh, yes. And as you mentioned earlier, we have some what a lot of coaches refer to as impact players here today. We've already seen the exploits of, uh, of a Reggie Cobb, Ernie Jones, Ernie Jones. We're also going to see Johnson, him again in the East-West game. That's right. That, by the way, is a new Peach Bowl record. The win, by the way, is a bit of a crosswind. It would be this being a totally enclosed, no open end to the stadium here. Why the wind doesn't really mean anything. Cleveland is going to run it out. I can see why. That's a good return out beyond the 25-yard line. Good moves by Terrence Cleveland. Well, that's right to his average. He's been averaging 25 yards of return on the, on the kickoffs, and that's just exactly what he hit on that one, 25 yards. So with our scoreboard showing three minutes and 42 seconds left to play in the first quarter, each team has scored. Tennessee leading 7-3. The tailback now is Keith Davis, number 28. The fullback is Charles Wilson, number 32. Faked it. Well, that was Keith Davis. I thought for a split second there that Jeff Francis still had the ball. The short yard. Gain of two on first down for Davis. Looks like Francis might be making a change here. Well, he's on the play. Oh, Henton is, uh oh, Henton is in for a couple of plays. Down. A little more than seven for first down. Flag went flying before the snap. So whatever was wrong was spotted by one of the officials prior to the snap of the ball. Well, I think you have a Henton with the kind of numbers we just saw there on the, on the screen to have him available if for whatever reason he wants to replace Francis. Third and 13 now after that penalty. And looking. This is Davis. Well short of a first down. From the Indiana 27. 
Pretty good special team coverage there. Ray, there's a flag down on the field. Indiana had 12 men on the field. Oh. It's going to be a penalty against Indiana. They had 12 men on the field. It's so unusual to see a flag drop back near the punt return man. So, oh, 15 yard penalty. Whoa, it's a make. A very costly penalty. Well, that was. I thought that was just a, a five-yard delay of the game penalty. They, they penalized at 15, so evidently that's a rule that I just missed, Ray. Well, it's a first down. That we know. Jeff Francis, we know, also is back in at quarterback, number 19. First down, Tennessee at their own 44, leading 7-3 with a minute 24 left to play first quarter. And there was a fake. Oh, a quick screen was almost picked off by Waiters. Whoo, that was Anthony Miller who caught that pass, but Waiters anticipated that, and that would have been, unless he falls down, that's six for Indiana. One of the things that, that Indiana does is throw a lot of screens. When the three wide receivers, they throw a lot of screens to the outside people. You certainly can see that Indiana has practiced and worked against it. Tennessee is a big screen team, but you can see how much time Indiana's put in on defensively. Three wide receivers, they go to the outside. When they got two backs, they go to the backs for the screens. Gain of five, second down five. Cobb is back at tailback. He scored the game's only touchdown. Look right, look left. Look, missed the receiver at the 40-yard line. And that pass was intended for Alvin Harper. And again, you can see the number of folks that they're using. You've seen the ball thrown to Woods, to Miller, to Cleveland. Now they have Harper in there as a wide receiver. They really keep their folks interested. You can imagine what that does for your practice situation when a player knows he's going to play. Third down and five. Now we also have McGuire, number 80 in the game for Tennessee, a wide receiver. Now what happened there? Was there a false move by someone on the offensive line? Responded with a 52-yard field goal, so it's 7-3, Tennessee. Francis. He's going deep for Miller. Touchdown! Anthony Miller. Anthony Miller is a great football player who has been injured a lot of the season. And I said at the start of the show that a lot of folks think that Anthony Miller is just as good as Tim Brown, the Heisman Trophy winner from Notre Dame. Watch for him to go in the NFL draft this year. He has 4-2 speed in the 40. Just great, outstanding speed. 5'11", 178 from Pasadena, California. Play action pass. He makes a little fake, and all Miller did was run straight down the field. He just ran past the defensive back five yards in the end zone, ran right by Mike Dumas. Bill Rich will drive for point number 14. Is his dad happy? His dad oh. Bob is in the stands here talking for the ball game. That kid gets the ball up in the air real well. So the scoreboard with 27 seconds left in the first quarter reads 14 to 3. Here's that play again. Oh, just an excellent job. Good, good pass. Put a little air underneath it. Put high. Allowed Miller to use his speed and run into it. And the, yeah. there he is. Isolation on him. Take a look now. He just runs down the field. Just runs right by the defensive back. He knows when the defensive back. When the defensive back doesn't get out of his back pedal, look at the concentration. Looking over his shoulder, eyes on the ball all the way, looks it all the way in. Good catch. And again, this young man, watch him in the future. And a nod to that offensive line as well that gave Francis the time. Simons, Stewart, Galbraith, Kirk, and Bruin. They did a great job of pass blocking. Well, when Tennessee scored the initial touchdown of the game, Indiana then responded several series later on a Peach Bowl record 52 yard field goal by Pete Stojanovich. Well, Tennessee really has some weapons now. They got the great cop from the running back standpoint. Wilson and Howard, both good blockers, good offensive line. We talk about Galbraith and going inside there. But then they've got that great speed on the outside with Cleveland and Miller and Woods, Harper. The thing about those receivers, other than Miller, they're young. Woods is a sophomore, Cleveland is a sophomore. Harper is a freshman. They have another freshman, Vincent Moore from Memphis. This is not an old football team. This is a young football team. Now the man in the middle for Indiana will be Ernie Jones, and he had a great return after that first score of the game, the score by Tennessee. He brought it out to around midfield. Rich kicks. Jones at the 10. He 
they just won't go down. And that's a good return out beyond the 30 yard line and uh, we have 18 seconds left in the first quarter 21 yard return. There they are on the sidelines now that's offensive lineman talking about some adjustments to see Galbraith there and Kirk the offensive line offensive coaches sitting there talking to him saying now we did this we did that he's asking them questions to the offensive line was a defensive man shaded on your outside was he head up that's how you make adjustments during the course of the game Thompson 32 the tailback Powell 31 the fullback Schnell's going to the air good hit that time by the defender on the play Victor Peppers and as a result the pass incomplete intended for the tight end Tim Jordan Time to bring the tight end from the right all the way up. Six plays, 73 yards on that touchdown drive with, of course, the big play, the finale. 47 yards, Francis to Miller. Second down, 10, Indiana from the Indiana 30. Thompson. Someone. I want, that was Mark Hovannik that got an arm out, escaping the block, and dropped Thompson for no gain. And that's the end of the first quarter. The score, Tennessee 14, Indiana 3. We'll be back after these words from your local station. Guess who that young fan is rooting for? you happen to be watching on a black and white television set. Smokey. There he is. Over here. Smokey says, I don't need any TV time. The overcast has given way to bright sunshine here in Atlanta. As the Indiana Hoosiers are faced with a third and ten at their own 30 as we start the second quarter. And Tennessee on top by 14 to 3. Tennessee 102 yards in the air so far. Indiana 50. Schnell splits his backs. Oh, that hit by McDaniel shook the ball loose from Kenny Allen. And speaking of players here today who will be in that East-West game, Terry McDaniel, the cornerback who made the hit here. Good job. Now, the ball should have been caught. And I see McDaniels come up and go for the ball. The arm is stripping away from him. And again, the defensive secondary coach said, if you can't get there, try to strip it away. That's just what he did. Pull that arm away from the ball. Dan Straczynski will be the punter. He's average just under 40. And Thomas Woods to accept the punt. Great hang time at the 30. Good coverage by the Indiana special team and by the same token, good uh, good spot from which to launch the offense. The score, Tennessee 14, Indiana 3. We'll be back in Atlanta after these messages. Dumps it off to Keith Davis, a flag down behind the line. Two flags, in fact. That usually indicates a holding call unless you see that somebody happened to belt the quarterback but that usually indicates holding well, 300 pound freshman so don't make a mistake like that once in a while it's now third and 15 well now there's a receiver that knew exactly where he had to go and it's a first down at the 35 yard line to Thomas Woods the senior from Gallatin Tennessee they're just doing it they're just doing an excellent job of reading the zone cover see any of them back in the zone he went down, found the open spot. You see how he delivered over the linebackers and in front of the deep backs, enough for the first down. It's a pressy passing attack by Tennessee, Ray. Yes, indeed. First and 10, 35-yard line of Indiana. We still have almost 13 minutes to play in the first half with Tennessee leading 14 to 3. Inside the 30, down to about the 28-yard line, William Howard. William Hired is a very unselfish football player. He's out of Lima, Ohio. Last year, he was the big gun from the standpoint of what Cobb has done for him this year. He now has moved to another position. His senior year, he's a strong hammer type. And again, he's the kind of the back that may wind up playing well in the pro league. 
The gain on the play, seven yards. Second down three, 29-yard line. Keith Davis. Oh, good cutback. All the way to the 15-yard line. And that Brian DeWitts, the free safety, had to make the tackle. Take a look at right there as he breaks through the line of scrimmage. And again, they, all those Tennessee running backs lower that shoulder. See how low they get when they get down into trouble? In reality, they're kind of dishing out punishment rather than taking it. And right now, Tennessee has Indiana's defense completely off balance, mixing up the passing game and the running game. First and 10, 15 yard line of Indiana. To the end zone. Touchdown. Terrence Cleveland. 15 yards. And Tennessee is very much in control right now with a 20 to 3 lead. And Francis is having a remarkable early part of this ball game. Well, we'll take a look now. He's back in the pocket. Now he goes to Cleveland and went down, just broke right out to the corner here. In the corner, the five foot eight, 149 pound sophomore Terrence Cleveland catches it for a touchdown. Tennessee's offense with the mixing of the running and passing really has him upset. Good delivery by Francis. He throws forward steps and throws off that front foot. Good velocity on the ball. Phil Rich will now, uh, out of a Lee England hold, drive for Tennessee's point number 21. Tennessee 21, Indiana 3, and Francis is 10 out of 13 for 143 yards and two touchdowns. We'll be back after these words from your local station. Tennessee, Eric Moore and Ernie Jones, of Indiana, and we hope that you'll be joining us. This total yardage in the way of offense so far, it is very significant. Tennessee has already posted 261 yards versus, my goodness, that last drive went 60, 62 yards. Indiana's managed just 56 yards so far. Francis to Cleveland, the scoring play. Well, the last three times uh, Tennessee has had the ball, they've just taken, moved in for touchdown. They're doing a great job of working the game at the line of scrimmage. Quarterback Francis is audible into probably 75, 80% of the plays that are being called right now. Jones, Allen, and Eddings are the three deep men with Jones in the middle for Indiana. Hanging. Jones, who's already had one great return. It's a little bit of an opening. Another pretty good run back out to the 30 this time. Oh, let's see if Indiana can generate some offense. We know they have some skilled players. Anthony Thompson, their tailback, number 32. Ernie Jones, we've already talked about, who just returned that kickoff and is one of the outstanding wide receivers in college football. Tom Pulse will be the fullback, number 34, and Thompson wears number 32. The tight end is Jordan, number 86, and the wide outs are Allen, 83, and Jones, 27. Jones is uh, off to the right. That's close to a first down to tight end Tim Jordan. So Schnell on first down. Sets up a situation that every offensive coordinator, Ed, and every quarterback likes. Second and short. Yeah, you can do anything you want to do under that under those circumstances, and it's a, kind of a waste down. But the way Indiana's going right now, I think they're going to try to maybe pick up this first down by running the ball. They need to get to start moving the chains a little bit and get a little more confidence back in what they're doing offensively. Second down, three. penetration that time. That was Tracy Hayworth, a sophomore from Deckard, Tennessee, who penetrated. Result, loss of about a yard. It's going to set up a third down and just about, oh, between four and five to go for a first down. 10.40 to play first half, 21 to three, Tennessee in the lead. And Jones are both wide to the left. Here comes a blitz. And Thompson can't hold on. So Indiana 
so far, except for one drive, which resulted in a field goal, has been sputtering offensively. Well, they really have, and, and Tennessee just has them off balance, both offensively and defensively. Tennessee, not really known for being a blitzing team, came with a blitz that time. Straczynski has had punts so far of 47 and 40 yards. He's punt punting to Thomas Woods inside the Tennessee 30. Looks like Tennessee's coming after, Ray. They come. It's blocked. I think number 21 blocked it. Inside the 10 yard line. I think we should credit Preston Warren, number 21, with blocking that punt. Well, they lined up. They put 10 men up there, and you can see from the very beginning that they had their weight forward. They were all leaning forward, ready to go. You can see how they're shifted. They're coming from, 21's coming from the outside there, but there's folks on the inside. There's a whole large group of them in there. Now Tennessee, again, with, with big lead. Indiana's defense being put to a real tough test here. That's the third Tennessee blocking of a pump this season. So it's first and goal to go just inside the 10. Cobb will be the tailback. He's been out of there the last series or so. Howard is the fullback. Cobb. Fumble. Indiana has it. Assuming that number 13 recovered it, he at least has the trophy. Brian DeWitt's the free safety. There it is, just a straight uh, handoff. He tries to cut it back there as he cuts it back. Boom. Good hit there. A number 85 who was trying to, get, trying to get in there. Couldn't quite recognize that number. Let's see what we see here. Inside play was designed to go to this side. Cobb tried to cut it back over to the outside. There goes the fumble. See the Woods get in on top of it. It's a big scramble. He came up with it. Big break for Indiana. They needed something good like that to have happen. I've never seen the name Massillon in Ohio without thinking of Paul Brown because that's where he started his fantastic coaching career. Indiana from its own nine. Can the Hoosiers get something going? Thompson. That was Charles Kimbrough, a junior linebacker from Mobile, Alabama, who pursued with tremendous speed and brought back an outstanding running back for a loss of three yards back to the six, where it'll be second down and 13. Outstanding job by Kimbrough. He just shuffled right down the line of scrimmage, kept good leverage on the ball carrier, and when Thompson tried to make his move, Kimbrough was right there to make the good tackle. A tough spot for Dave Schnell and company, second and 13 from their own six. The receivers there. Well, there was great execution, and I love that call out to the 33 yard line. Ernie Jones. Well, you can see now, watch the little play action fake. Fakes like, well, they didn't do a good job with him. It's supposed to be a play action. He rolls out to his left, hard pass to throw. Jones did a good job of avoiding the cornerback who was trying to get a shove on him. And then he caught him in between the cornerback and the safety. Good play for Indiana to get him out of that hole. From the 6 to the 33 and a first and 10 Indiana. And some breathing room here with 9-10 to play in the first half. Fake to Thompson. Thompson's in the pass pattern. Pass incomplete at the 47-yard line. He wanted to get it to his tight end, Tim Jordan. But the man with the same number, 86, of the defense, Terry McDaniel, was there to defend against it. Dave Schnell. There I think also what happened there, Ernie Jones slipped. The, the sides are just a little bit wet when he took that tarp off. The, the water rolled off and right along the sideline there, it's wet. Jones slipped down on that play. I think he may have been looking for him also. Second down 10. Bill Mallory. I'm sure saying, hey, we got to get something going here. Second and 10. in motion. A little delay. There's Thompson. Good surge for the Indiana line. He's going to pick up about five yards. Well, that's their version of the sprint draw. The same play you see Tennessee running. Both teams have that. 
Look like they're going to roll out on the sprint uh, pass type play, hand it to the tailback, and he takes it up inside. Well, Dave Mallory right now, his biggest concern is he wants to make some first downs. I mean, Bill Mallory wants to make uh, Dave Mallory. Bill Mallory wants to make some first downs, keep his team off the field. His defense has to stay off the field a little bit. All right, Buford now, number eight, and Jones, 27, are the wide receivers on third down and five. by fullback Andre Powell, a senior from Sharon, South Carolina, and as a result, back-to-back -back first downs. Good job of reading the coverage here by Snell. He goes back, looking at the coverage. You can see Tennessee playing zone. He gets the ball to Powell between the linebackers. He goes forward, just enough to make the first down. You so see DeLong come in there, number 33, and put the finishing touches to him. Indiana started this from their own nine where they recovered a Tennessee fumble. They've now reached their own 46, first and 10. Thompson. Running low, like you had pointed out earlier, Ed. That's what coaches like their running backs to do. And as a result, he's able to get it uh, into Tennessee territory around the 47-yard line for a pickup of seven. Again, this is just a, a sprint draw to the right. Looking for daylight out there. As soon as he sees a little bit of daylight, he turns it up through there. And again, this is just exactly running low, picking up the extra yardage. This is exactly what Bill Mallory wants to happen right now. Pick up some first downs and eventually score. Second down three. Here comes the pullback. Doesn't get very far, Andre Powell. Incidentally, that tackle on first down of Thompson was made by Keith DeLong and Charles Kimbrough. And I wanted to mention that specifically because Keith DeLong, if some of you are saying, wait a minute, DeLong, DeLong, that's right. Steve DeLong, his dad, was one of the all-time Tennessee great football players. And Ed, I'm told that his dad's here in attendance today. Well, I'm sure most of these players out there, first father, time mothers, and relatives are the out there. The first time out. Timeout, Indiana. They'll be facing a third and one when we return with the scoreboard reading 21 to three, Tennessee leading. We'll be back right after these messages. The Indiana Hoosiers are here, and they are indeed. And they maybe have something going here. Third and one at the Tennessee 45. 6.56 to play, first half. Double tight ends. Saunders and Jordan. Jones is the man in motion. Very close. The spot is all important, and I think he has it between the 38 and 39, and he being Anthony Thompson. Now, Thompson had a, had a great season at Indiana, 947 yards on the ground, and he caught passes for over 200 yards. They made the first down, which yep. is what they really needed to keep moving those chains and get a, some points on the board here, get himself back in the ballgame. Now Jones goes to the left and Buford comes to the right. The two wide receivers. And the tight end Jordan is on the left side on first and ten Indiana. He has a man down there. Is it Jones? It is. Give Snell a lot of credit on that play. He changed that play at the line of scrimmage. He saw what he wanted out there. The cornerback was way inside of Jones. Jones just ran right down the field for the touchdown. What a weapon. Ernie Jones, senior, Elkhart. And you'll be able to see him in that East-West game along with the offensive tackle Eric Moore and the defensive cornerback of Tennessee, Terry McDaniel. There you see it again. And again, you can just see Jones using that speed. And... Watch how he concentrates on the ball. I think we've got another shot of this coming from a different way, but we'll get it probably after this uh, extra point. Now it's Pete Stojanovic with the holder, Tim Jordan, the tight end. Strong leg. Remember, he already set a Peach Bowl record today with a 52-yard field goal. Well, now, the scoreboard reads Tennessee 21, Indiana 10. We'll be back after these words from your local station. Well, here's a touchdown pass again. Of course, took nine plays, 91 yards, used three minutes, and got himself back in the ball game. And Jones, during the games leading into today's game, during the first 11, had scored 12 touchdowns and had caught 59 passes for over 1,100 yards. 
Jones today has caught three for 91. But, so now uh, Thomas Cleveland will be the deep man for the upcoming kickoff. Well, these kickers and uh, these well, kickers were just right, huh? Great, uh, great strength in their legs on both teams. And he wants that ball in the tee just right. That's very important to all those place kickers. They get it set right. They know, they see how they, now some of them will tilt a little bit more. His is almost straight up right. They know exactly the spot that they want to hit that ball on. Most place kickers that I've known are in a, they live in a very special world. This is going to be Cleveland at the center. Good speed. It looked like an alley closed up in a hurry. Oh, 22 yard return by Cleveland, where he is met by Andre Hall. So now let's see what Tennessee's strategy calls for. Jeff Francis was relieved very briefly here in the first half by Sterling Hinton, a freshman from Passaic, New Jersey. But now it's Francis, who is 10 of 13, 143 yards, and two touchdowns. Volunteers. First down, Francis. There's his uh, short man, Cobb, on a five yard gain. As a passer, Ed, does a quarterback like to see a zone as the quarterbacks are seeing today? Well, they like to see a zone, especially when they don't have a lot of pressure on them now. That time, I thought Tennessee was in a two deep. They really wanted to go deep. They were trying to get someone down through the middle of the two deep zone. But Indiana did an excellent job of keeping the field well covered, so he had to come off the cob late. Woods and Moore, two of the wide receivers. That's a first down run by Charles Wilson. Tennessee has been piling up huge chunks of yardage here in the first half which has 543 remaining Eric Hickerson made the defensive play on Wilson the ball is moved out now to the Tennessee 42 yard line first and 10 volunteers Woods is out wide to the left Miller and Moore are the three wide receivers fake to the tailback Francis loses a couple. Good job by that Indiana defense. Yes, he did. They dropped back in the zone coverage. The linebackers dropped back in there. And the interior people did a good job of... Uh... Joe Huff was one of the defenders who brought the, the Tennessee quarterback, Francis, down. So it's going to be second down 12 at the Tennessee 40. Now we have Eric Coleman checking into the secondary now. And Hickerson comes out. That's a change at the corner. Second and 12. Nothing fancy, just straight up the middle end. Well, second down and 12. They took those receivers, spread them out real wide. Indiana anticipating the, the passing game, started upfield rush for the line, that opened it up inside. And again, they've got the Indiana defense off balance. The receivers were split real wide. Linebackers and secondary people were dropped off. The Indiana defensive people rushed upfield. Watch the hole open up there. I see a good job of number 32. Wilson at number 75. Uh, Bruin stepped up through that hole and make good blocks. Good play. All the way to the Indiana 35. Now this time he switches. Oh. Ooh, what hard running by those running backs. First it's Cobb. Now it's Wilson. Hickerson just went back in and made the tackle. Well, they're really doing a great job of mixing up their plays now between the passing game. There's a draw play again, a kind of a sprint for all aspect of it. Look at the hole open up. That was Cobb again. Good I job in there by Bruin. Well, Cobb just did an excellent runner, but a good block in there. Bleed block by Bruin, the fine senior. Listen to this, Ed. 12 carries, 118 yards for Cobb at this point. First down at the 20 yard line. <laughs> up the middle. But Joe Huff made the stop. Joe Huff coming from the outside, just knife down from the outside to stop that running play. The way they'll counteract that, maybe some type of inside or a little short reverse back to the inside if he continues to do that to help out on the inside. Now Keith Davis, number 28, replaces Cobb at tailback. Wilson stays in at fullback. 
second down, eight after the gain of two by the fullback. And again, he's calling the play at the last scrimmage. Now you can see him audible into a play. Indiana is able to stop the run at the 13 yard line by Wilson. Take a look at the hits now that uh, Wilson absorbs on this play. You're right down in there where the line play is. Look at all the hitting that's going on now. Boom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. That's why they had the whirlpool a day after the game. Third down and three at the Indiana 13. Francis trying to get the, his message to the wide receivers. There's Keith Davis. Good, good defensive play by Indiana, led by Darren Bush. A junior linebacker. He's another young man out of Massillon, Ohio. Fourth down. Let's see. About a yard shy. It appears to be about a yard shy of a first down. And it appears that Tennessee will try a field goal. Well, a field goal would put him up by two touchdowns. Lee England will hold. For Phil Rich, a 28-yard field goal attempt with 2.31 to play in the first half. No, hooked it to the left. So the score remains Tennessee 21, Indiana 10, and the Hoosiers will have the ball. We'll be back to a packed house in Atlanta right after these messages. First and 10, Indiana from the Indiana 20 after the missed field goal attempt. Schnell at quarterback. Pulse at fullback. Thompson the tailback. On first down. Pass complete. Anthony Thompson. Short game. Have you noticed any particular adjustments that Indiana has made offensively or a change in their thinking, offensive thinking at all? No, I think they're being forced to put the ball in the air a little bit more than they originally wanted to. Now they just have patience. I think Bill Bowie's probably saying, have patience and take that short pass and pick up four, five, six, and seven each time underneath that zone. They picked up four, second down six from the Indiana 24. Thompson. Just a couple of yards. Anthony Thompson, sophomore running back, Terre Haute. Met first by Keith DeLong, whose hometown is listed as Lawrence, Nebraska. Now here's a key third down and about four from the Indiana 26. A minute 25 left to play in the half. Tennessee leading 21 to 10. Forward progress doesn't mean a thing because Thompson could not hold on under a big hit from Mike Kelly, who is now in defensively at an outside linebacker spot. So Indiana unable to generate anything on this possession. This means it's punt formation time for Dan Straczynski. Remember the last time he punted? Blocked. Exactly right. Let's see where they line up and come after it again. They're lined up coming inside again. Looks like they're coming strong inside. Fair catch. Tennessee 41 yard line by Thomas Woods. So one minute and two seconds remain in the first half. Spectacular halftime activities here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium for this Peach Bowl. Sold out. Tennessee has good field position. I don't, I don't think they'll be conservative the way they've been going with putting the ball up in the air and especially with their ability to run that sprint draw and the big yardage they grabbed up with that. Look for them to still stay wide open. Francis 11 of 14 for 148 yards. The Tennessee quarterback. Looking already for a receiver. Good protection goes to a short man. That's Keith Davis. He heads for the sidelines and uh, picks up about 14 yards. And again, take a look at it. Here he is. He's looking downfield. No one there. He comes off to the outlet pass to the outside. 
Davis with good presence of mind now runs to the outside to get out of bounds to stop the clock. First down, 45-yard line. The new fullback is William Howard. Tailback, Keith Davis. There's a short man again. He'll try to get out of bounds, Keith Davis. But unless a timeout is called, oh, the officials are saying, keep that clock running. Well, Darren Bush made the tackle. Tennessee is going to take one of their timeouts now, though, I think, to stop it. With 40 seconds left to play in the half. So Indiana, let's see, had taken, I think Indiana had taken one, now Tennessee takes one. It's Tennessee still has both their uh, timeouts left. They have two remaining, okay. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. 21 to 10, Indiana scored first on a field goal and then on a beautiful Schnell to Jones pass for their touchdown. Meanwhile, Francis has thrown two touchdown passes and Cobb powered his way over from six yards out for the third. Tennessee touchdown. All of our conversions have been successful. Well, you can see Francis over on the sideline talking to the coaching staff. Walt Harris, the offensive coordinator, worked with the quarterbacks. There's a bowl fact. The only other Peach Bowl appearance in 1982. Tennessee lost to Iowa 28-22. Tennessee, and this is the seventh straight year they've been to bowl games. 40 seconds to play in the half. Just about ready to go now. Second down and one. Tennessee at the Indiana 36. Woods, Miller, Cleveland. Three wide receivers. One actually is a slot back. Francis with good protection. Now he had, well, there's good. It was very good coverage on all those receivers the way I looked at it, Ed. Yeah, exactly right. That was a coverage sack. He went back in the, in the pocket. Had a little bit of time, but downfield, the Indiana secondary was doing a great job. And because of the sack and the running play, which used up time, Tennessee is forced to use their second timeout. That means that just 28 seconds now remain in the half. And it's going to be, well, still second down and one because Francis was dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Let me pick up a couple of stats here once. I want to remind you again about our East-West game coming up two weeks from today from Palo Alto. The football team even next year. Yeah, Chanel, for example, is just a sophomore. Anthony Thompson, their great tailback, is only a sophomore, but now we're centered on Tennessee. And speaking of tailbacks, number 34, Reggie Cobb, is back in at tailback. Third and one. Up to the air. There's Cobb, tackled immediately. And was he inbounds or out of bounds? Well, they'll stop the clock to move the chains, though. And Tennessee's going to go with a no-huddle offense. Uh, they have, the official has not spotted the ball, hasn't realized it's a first down. They have to move the chains. The clock is stopped. Tennessee's ready to run the ball, and the chains aren't set yet. There the good official goes with it. 22 seconds left. This is the first down play. Flushed out of the pocket. Francis uh, is able to stop the clock. Now, that took seven seconds. From 22 down to 15, the clock runs. They really did an excellent job. Tennessee did a good job of utilizing the clock about as good as they could under those situations. No one was open. He couldn't get it to them, but they were ready to go before the officials even had the chain spotted. Loss of a couple. Second down, 12, 33-yard line of Indiana. Now out to the right goes McGuire. Out to the right goes Cleveland. And Woods is to the left. Three wide receivers, no tight end. There goes Cobb. Good open field tackle there by Andre Hall, a junior strong safety from Flint, Michigan. Well, I think the thinking on that play was just get in a little bit closer and give Rich a chance for another field goal. There's only eight seconds left. They took the timeout. They just wanted to get the ball in a little bit closer to give the youngster the opportunity to try another field goal. This will be a 46-yard attempt. His longest of the year, he's kicked a 51-yarder, so he can make it from this range. During the uh, regular season, Rich hit on 16 of 23 field goal attempts and 40 of 42 extra points for a total of 88 points. He missed today from uh, 41 and 28 yards. And he's kicking today off of natural surf. 
uh, turf out there, whereas normally he's been on AstroTurf up there at Tennessee in their stadium. So that may have a little effect. A real difference in kicking on this natural surface. Have to plant that ball a, a foot a little bit closer to the tee. The ground just a little bit softer will give a little bit. Sometimes that really messes up the timing of field goal kicker. Now the holder is Lee England. 46 yard attempt. Eight seconds left to play in the half. Tennessee already leading by 11. And this is well off to the right and short. So Indiana still uh, trailing by just 11 with the clock showing four seconds remaining. Well, uh, since Tennessee has no timeouts remaining, will uh, Bill Mallory and staff decide to just get rid of those four seconds on the clock and go in and get things set for the second half? Well, I would think the way the first half has gone, Bill will be very happy to go in. He had the opportunity. Tennessee had the opportunity to miss three field goals, and they were down in the scoring opportunity, so they could have had more. Tennessee could have more points on the board, so I'm sure Bill will go in and halftime be in a position to talk to his team about, well, that was their half, and we're only 11 points behind. By the way, Ed, that secondary is in a prevent-prevent defense. The four members of the secondary, there's a, a line of three back around the 45 of Tennessee, and then a super safety man back at the 35 with four seconds left in the half. Well, Chanel's going to try and create something here. Let's throw it and hope he has Ernie Jones down there, and the pass is picked off, and this is McDaniel. A flag is down. Remember, a flag is down. Terry McDaniel made the interception. Let's see what the officials have. In certain situations, the half cannot end or the game end on a penalty. Let's see what our officials, led by referee John Sophie, decide. There's a good possibility he called offensive pass interference against uh, Jones. Jones, in attempting to fight for that ball, was pushing some folks around down there. I would believe this is probably against Jones. Here's it's our pass interference on the offense. Penalties decline. Half is over. Good call, coach. Half. Good call, Ed, ball, Ed Biles. Well, we have a tremendous first half. The ball was moving. The overcast has come back into play, but that threat of rain that was talked about by the weather forecasters ahead of time, fortunately, has, uh, has not prevailed. Now the stats in the first half. The volunteers have had the big edge. Well, Each team has turned it over once. Big difference in the rushing yardage there, Ray. Uh, Tennessee with 164 yards against Indiana's only 20 yards rushing, and Indiana came in the game thinking that they had to rush the ball. Passing stats fairly even, but a big difference in total yardage. Tennessee, 346 yards. Uh, Indiana's 151. Tennessee, 17 minutes of possession time. Here are the highlights from the first half. All right, this would be the first scoring play, and this is Reggie Cobb bullying his way into the end zone, and Tennessee led by six to nothing. It was a six yard run. Then Francis to the air. And great concentration by Miller, Anthony Miller. And uh, with the extra points, it was 14 to nothing. And that was the third Tennessee touchdown. That was to Cleveland, a 15 yard pass from Francis, who uh, had a big time in the first half. Whatever position that you're in, in Indiana's case, they're behind. The last thing that they talked about in the locker before they came out, Bill Mallory told his squad, look, we can take this second half kickoff, march down the field, and put points on the board. We are right back in this football game, and that's exactly why they, they defer to teams do that. The kicker for Tennessee will be Dick Borgignoni and Ernie Jones, who had one great kickoff return in the first half. Of almost 50 yards is the man in the middle, number 27 for Indiana. 21 to 10, and Tennessee leading and kicking off. But this is uh, kicked away from Jones. And this is Eddings. Might have slipped a little bit, and actually, I think, ran up the back of one of his own players. He sure did. He ran up in the back of uh, number 19 there. <laughs> Brad Shields, and otherwise, if he had been able to make that move, the field might just be a little wet in some spots out there. If he could have avoided that, it looked like he had a long gainer on that return. I think uh, Morgan Noni deliberately kicked the ball away from Ernie Jones. I would think that's a good assumption. That's a, And if he did, it shows he has some intelligence. Keep it away from Jones the way he can run. All right, Indiana, first and 10 from the Indiana 28-yard line. 
Pulse at fullback, Thompson at tailback, Schnell is the quarterback. Two wide receivers to the white, to the right, the wide side of the field. Thompson. Good gain, almost nine yards on first down. And the thing that was different, in that one play, the Indiana offensive line got off on the ball faster and quicker and into the defensive players better than they did the entire first half. Gain on the play, eight yards, second down two from the Indiana 36. Tony Buford acting as a messenger. He and Kenny Allen have been pretty much alternating as the, as the messengers. Now Jones is to the left, Buford to the right. The tight end is in the game, Jordan. Second down two. Thompson. Did he get the first down? He's very, very close. I think he stepped out of bounds short of it over there. Keith DeLong ran him out of bounds. One yard shy of a first down. Third and one. Indiana 37 yard line. Now the message is brought in by tight end Terrence Saunders. Three of eight third down conversions by Indiana. Here's their fourth opportunity. Now they have two tight ends and the one wide receiver, Jones. Oh, I don't think Charles Kimbrough, the inside linebacker of Tennessee, where did that forward progress? It's going to be fourth down. There was no surge by the offensive line. They they surged on the first uh, first play, but they're going to be forced to punt the, after these three plays to start the second half. But fourth and one. The punt will be by Straczynski, and the deep man will be Thomas Woods. Timeout. Maybe. Hey, this might be someone on that offensive staff. You think maybe said, hey, coach, let's go for the whole thing. Or let's go for the first down. Whatever. Indiana's asked for a timeout. We'll return to Atlanta with Tennessee leading 21 to 10 after these messages. Did I say Indiana leading? Well, we're back, Ray. You didn't mean to say Indiana was leading 21 to 10. I think I got so excited when they were bringing their personnel back in there that was obviously indicating they were going for first down. Tennessee is leading, but Indiana's going for it on four one at their own 38-yard line. Two tight ends. Only Jones is out wide. He made it. He made it, Anthony Thompson. So that first possession of the second half is still a, a vitally important series here. Psychologically, it's extremely important. Now, take a look at the offensive line. We talk about the surge. See him coming off the ball. See him getting into the Tennessee defensive lineman. Now, watch good lead block in there by Poles. And you can see Thompson going over top. Good job by the back in the number 34. Tom Poles opened that hole up for him. First down and 10, 40 yard line of Indiana. Make to Thompson. Little roll out. There's Thompson within about a yard or so of another first down. Pretty good judgment that time by Schnell. Schnell. Schnell does an excellent job with good poise here. Take a little job. This is Allen now. He's going down the field. Now he comes to the outside here and he and he's covered and he's covered. He didn't realize the defensive back was right behind him. Now he's going to go back to the huddle and tell the quarterback but that defensive back was right in the vicinity. He saw something completely different than what Schnell saw. Thompson has caught passes good for 25 yards. He gained six that time. Second down four. Pulse. Within a half yard of a first down at midfield. Richard Cooper, the senior linebacker from Memphis, made the defensive play for Tennessee. Well, they ran that play behind their big offensive tackle, Eric Moore. He'll be in that East-West game, Ed. Yeah, he'll also be in the Senior Bowl game. He's a good prospect. Third and less than one. Mike Whitehead at number 91 has just checked into the defense for Tennessee. Two tight ends again for Indiana, Jordan and Marte. A keeper. Oh, there's an option. 
motion uh, type of play by Snell, and he has another first down. Well, I think they're back into Indiana type football now, making first downs, moving the chains. And again, I'm sure that they talked about this. I'm sure Bill Mallory was very unhappy with only 20 yards of offense the first half. Watch him come right down the line of scrimmage on the option. That's a little fake like he's going inside. He knows how much yardage he needs. He turns up, tries to get himself lower. Most quarterbacks run too high, but he knew he needed just a yard, so he was looking for a little bit of daylight to surge forward to make that first down. Tom Pulse was out in front of him after Schnell had faked to the fullback. First down, 46-yard line of Tennessee. Buford and Jones are the wideouts. Jones in motion. Was Cedric Klein, a sophomore from Loudon, Tennessee. He lines up on the outside here and he's coming all the way on this blitz. Take a look, there's a pick. Now he's going to come from the right of the screen from the back side. That was the wide side of the field. Snell luckily didn't fumble the ball. He retained possession of it. A lot of times that's when you see that fumble. That defensive back blitzes from the outside, gets his hand on the ball, and forces the fumble. Loss on the play. 10 yards, second down, 20. Good anticipation by the Tennessee defensive coaches of a play action pass. Now Allen is out wide to the left. He draws the attention of Victor Peppers, the right cornerback. Three man rush. That pass completion was good for about 12 yards to the fullback, Tom Pulse. And I felt, Ed, that Pulse did a good thing there that I'm told you coaches like. He kept moving, realizing the quarterback was in trouble. Exactly right. Most coaches have what they call a scramble drill for their quarterbacks and receivers. When you get in a situation where no one's open, you have designated receivers. You want them to come back to the ball, someone to go deep into the end zone. But all of them should work their way back to the ball so the quarterback can get some relief. Pulse did an excellent job that time of working to get himself open. Third and nine at the 44-yard line of Tennessee. Ten minutes left to play, third quarter. 21 to 10, Tennessee leading. Jones in motion. Looks again. And there's Jones. 19-yard line. Now, Terry McDaniel was following him as he went in motion. It was almost as if he were on him man for man. Is that right, Ed? He was on him man for man because they came with a blitz. But that time, the blitz didn't get there. When the blitz doesn't get there, that defensive back is in a position. He has to chase a fast guy like a Terry Jones all over the field. There you can see the action. See all the orange jerseys blitzing. Now, once Jones got that inside position, it was an easy pass for Snell to complete to Jones. So it's a first down. Indiana with a very impressive drive just in the side, the 20-yard line of Tennessee. Eddings replaces Jones at wide receiver. Double tight ends. There goes Pulse. Eight yards. And right now, this Tennessee offensive line is really getting off the mark. The Indiana offensive line is getting off the mark, right? <laughs> but <laughs> who's excited? Right now is what we saw the exact reverse of the first half. Tennessee's offense had Indiana's defense off balance the first half. Now, Indiana's offense has got Tennessee off balance by mixing that pass and running game in there. Pulse picked up eight. Jones is back in. He rested for one play. Second and two at the Tennessee 12. The tailback, Thompson. He will not be denied. Touchdown. Indiana's fans get a chance to roar their approval on a 12-yard run by tailback Anthony Thompson. And remember the fourth down call where he went for it and kept that drive alive. It took some courage to make that call. But you can also know what happened in that Indiana locker room. The Bill Mallory said, us with 20 yards of rushing, impossible. Look at the look at that Indiana offensive line now coming off the ball. Look at the lead block in there before Thompson now does a good job of avoiding two tacklers and gets into the end zone. Another low, low angle. And again, you can see what happens down there in the trenches. Good job by Thompson. Good job of avoiding some tackles there and carrying some people in the end zone. Well, that's great effort. Now, Indiana is going for, for two. There's another look as they're lined up for it. We got a lot of different angles of this. Boom, look at him force the tackle to miss the tackle there. Another forced miss the tackle right here. Drives it into the end zone. Great effort by Thompson, that sophomore. He got by two good tacklers, DeLong and Days, on his way to the score. Now, 
Indiana trading by five is going for two. Allen and Jones are to the right. Jones goes in motion. No good. Good play by Daniel. Oh, great play by Terry McDaniel. Just a great defensive play by Terry McDaniel because Jones had gotten uh, inside of him on the play. Well, that first drive by Indiana changes the scoreboard to Tennessee 21, Indiana 16. We'll be back after these words from your local station. And they have been entertained royally before the ball game. Good, ha good half of football. Now a good third quarter. Ed, in view of the tremendous edge that Tennessee had in total offense in the first half, what would Mallory's defensive assistants have tried to do here at halftime as we get ready to watch Tennessee for the first time here with the ball in the second half? Well, they're going to have to do something about their zone coverage. Of course, there's a scoring drive. It took 12 plays, 72 yards, took over six minutes, finished it up with a 12-yard run. There is Cleveland, a speedster. He'll be in the middle. The other two men are Poles and Davis, and now the kicker for Indiana, Pete Stoyanovich. And we'll tell you again, he holds the Peach Bowl record longest field goal in this game today. It is one of 52 yards, large, longest goal in the history of this bowl. This series becomes very important for Tennessee now after Indiana did that to see whether their offensive coaches keep the drive going or whether Indiana's defensive coaches made adjustments to stop what they were doing the first half. Not that deep. This is Cleveland at the 12. 20. Uh oh. Let's see who was that 87 or 97 got an arm out there. That was Derek Daniels who got an arm out, and there's an Indiana player down. Well, every one of the punt returns, the kickoff returns, it almost looks like it was gonna, gonna break. The team trailing at halftime have won two of the last three Peach Bowls. Well, that's interesting. Well, I'll tell you this, I won't forget last year, as time ran out, Virginia Tech defeated North Carolina State on a field goal. Whoa, it was a thriller. And the way we're going here right now. Well, the Hoosier fans hope that trend keeps up today. First and ten. Volunteers, their own 29-yard line. Oh. Power running by William Howard. One of two fullbacks used today by Tennessee. The volunteers have been alternating Howard with Wilson. And it looks like Cobb pulled, he's feeling the back of his leg there. It looked like he may have pulled his hamstring a little bit. Sometimes on a field like this where it's just the least bit soggy, the players will have more problems with hamstrings than a normal type field. Keith Davis takes over at tailback after the gain of eight on first down. Second down two, Tennessee 37. This is Keith Davis. And his surge got him a first down just across the 40. Today, Francis has completed, let's see, 12, 14 of 17 passes to Tennessee quarterback for 177 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. First and 10, the Volunteers, just beyond their 40. Woods, Miller, Cleveland, three wide receivers. For William Howard. That was Doug Schlereth, a junior from Biddeford, Maine. Led an Indiana surge that time. Good job by Walt Harris, junior defensive lineman out of Detroit. There is Reggie Cobb, who has great statistics today. I don't think he hurt himself badly on that play, but it just looked like he just looked like it with that big day, 13 for 120 yards. I think he pulled the hamstring just slightly. Second down nine. Francis has time. Pass complete short of a first down to Howard. The 48-yard line. So every third down now becomes increasingly important. We have seven minutes to play in the third quarter. It is a third down and just about three for a first down. Two wide receivers left, one wide receiver to the right. Third down three. Oh, we'll go to the run. 
This might be a first down at the 49-yard line of Indiana. It's close. Willie Bates, the leading tackler during the season for Indiana, made that tackle. They've had great success on a lot of third down We're situations. Where they went to those three wide receivers, and Indiana was anticipating it was going to be a pass, and they ran that draw play, kind of a lead draw, sprint draw type play, and picked up good yardage on third down situations. Ed, while they're measuring for this down, Emil Narek, who is the, I think his title's commissioner of the Collegiate Independence Football Officiating Association, he pointed out why that was a 15-yard penalty for 12 men on the field instead of a five-yard penalty. I think he explained it to you, did he not? Yeah, they said the, the ruling was it's a five-yard penalty if a player is running off the field. Uh -huh. But it's a 15-yard penalty if a player participates in the play. Ah. I don't think it's a very good rule, quite frankly. If a guy comes off the sideline and takes a cheap shot or something, maybe. But, you know, if someone makes a mistake. I think 15 yards is too tough a, a penalty to call on the situation. But basically, five yards if a guy's running off the field, 15 if he participates. It is a first down at the 49-yard line of Indiana. So Tennessee trying to regain some momentum here. That's first down number 20 for Tennessee. Indiana 49. This is Keith Davis trying to get outside. It's about eight yards on first down, so this powerful uh, Tennessee running attack. Dwayne Dow on the field. Well, Ray, this was a dead part of the stadium, the Indiana bench in the first half. But right after Indiana recovered that fumble down to the goal line to st stave away uh, to possible Tennessee score, these Indiana people really got excited. Running back Tom Fultz said to Schrader, the big lineman, we're going to win this thing now. We're going to win it. Ray? Okay, Dwayne. Second and two, and Cobb is back in the game, number 34. And there, whoa! Sir, tremendous penetration by number one Hall, the strong safety, and Dan Bauer, number 55. We're seeing both teams beginning to blitz their strong safety. That time, Indiana blitzing. Earlier, we saw Tennessee do the blitzing. Both teams beginning to blitz the strong safety and running situations where they might even anticipate a run. Now, Keith Davis has immediately replaced Cobb, and it's third and still about three. There was no gain on that last play. Flag. Pass incomplete. But there's a flag down and a little uh, bit of a scuffle going on behind the line of scrimmage. Let's see what our officials come up with. Well, I, obviously, I think the penalty is against Tennessee. Now, this is to be a matter whether it was a motion penalty before the ball was snapped or holding. The dead ball foul. The false start by the offense. Now, that was a third down pass in completion. So the option now belongs. No, Tennessee will not have will not have the option there. The movement was made before the ball was snapped, Ray. An official just maybe was a little bit late uh, coming out with the flag. They will not have the option on this play. I don't believe it's going to be third down. Uh, the movement was prior to the snap, maybe just right prior to it. So they did not have an option. If they'd had the option, obviously they'd have taken a fourth down. Ball start on the offense. Third down. Let's see if we can see the movement in there. The balls. You see the ball out the corner. Left side there. There he is. There's the movement. You see, he moved before the ball was snapped. Good camera work, and that's why they didn't have the option. The play was dead as soon as he moved like that. So it's a third and eight. Cleveland in motion. And Francis did a great job of escaping being tackled behind the line. William Howard is open in the right flat, and Tennessee comes up with a very big third and eight completion for a first down. Well, well, you talk about showing some poise. The junior quarterback right now is back in the pocket, and this was a key play because it was a third down situation. No one is open. No one is open. He begins scrambling around, finally finds Howard out in the flats. Indiana's zone defense had dropped way off of him, and that picked up a big first down for Tennessee on this drive. At the 29-yard line of Indiana, Francis appears to be making a change in his call. Tackle immediately made on Anthony Miller, who caught a touchdown pass in the first half. Tackle made by Joe Ziegler. Take a look at this now. It's ground level. When he throws the ball out there, watch the offensive lineman trying to come out there to get the block. Right now, the offensive lineman is awful slow coming out there. If he'd have gotten there, he'd have been able to make that block. 
Good job by the Indiana defensive backs recovering on. Cobb is back in at tailback, number 34, after that gain of five. Second and five, Tennessee. There goes Cobb. Indiana has it. That's Cobb's second fumble of the game. He fumbled earlier at the Indiana 9. And Nolan Harrison, a freshman from Homewood, Illinois, made the recovery. So Tennessee, after a very impressive drive underway, gives up the ball. Take a look at it now from the, from the end zone shot. There you see him hand off to Cobb. Nothing inside. He wants to take it to the outside. But watch the hit right there where they put the arm right on the ball. Bounces right out of there. And then you can see the scramble for it. There's the recovery. Now Indiana has Powell, number 31, at fullback. Thompson, number 32, at tailback. At the 25-yard line of Indiana, the Hoosiers have it. 4-10 to play third quarter. 21-16, Tennessee leading. Fake to the fullback. Here's the option. Here's Thompson. That was played very well by the Tennessee defenders. Led by the before many times mentioned Terry McDaniel. Great play. Well, he's an aggressive player. He has just shown exceptional play here today, Ray. And we've seen him play a lot of pass coverage, but that time he had to play off a blocker and come up and make the tackle. Terry McDaniel, senior from Saginaw, Michigan. Bill Mallory, the head coach at Indiana, who has done a rebuilding job par excellence. Second and 12. Now, complete. Forward progress will be the 33-yard line, two yards shy of a first down. Well, Jones, Jones does a good job on this play. He comes back to the football. He's going downfield when Snell is scrambling around. Watch him plant now. Now watch him work his way back to the ball. See, he's beyond the first down, but now he made the completion because he came back to catch the football. Kept the daylight between him and Kramer, the defensive back. Third down two, Indiana 34. Three minutes to play, third quarter. A fine defensive play by Keith DeLong. And that was very important, but Schnell had Jones out there, and he had his tight end Jordan out there. Well, he was going for Jordan, and Jordan was wide open up there. If Long does not knock that ball down, Jordan has a good reception. You see him moving to the outside, and Jordan now is working. He's looking for Jordan. The ball was intended for Jordan. See Jordan right there, number 86? He was wide open. Good play by DeLong. Now, back for this, uh, back for this uh, expected punt is Thomas Woods, Stradins. Straczynski to punt. Almost 40 yards is his average. Is his fourth punt of the day. 2.47 to play third quarter. And Tennessee leading by five. Fair catch. 29-yard line of Tennessee. Well, we've had the ball moving here in the third quarter. 21-16, Tennessee leading the Hoosiers. And we'll be back after these messages. Says Molly Green in aisle so and so, row so and so, seat so and so, will you marry me? Signed Randy Ray. Maybe we'll have an answer to that. Meanwhile, Francis escapes one bit of pressure. And that was a gain of about two to three yards. That's all to Keith Davis. You know, an interesting stat, Ray, that I probably overlooked and they should have brought up earlier, but Indiana going into this game. Pass defense, they were rated 14th nationally. They'd only been given up 141 yards per game during the entire season. Total yards now, Tennessee 397, Indiana 232. Tennessee leading by five points. Second down and a long seven. Keith Davis trying to find some running room. Not very much there this time. Let's see who led those tacklers. Willie Bates, that, uh, that figures. He was the leading Indiana tackler during the season. So if, uh, if games outcomes are measured by what teams do on third down, we're going to have a lot of very important third downs coming up for both teams. Third and five, Tennessee at the Tennessee 34 and a half. Now they're in the run and shoot look. First time they've had this look all day. And what an alert play by Kirk. Again, an alert play by Kirk, the center for Tennessee. 
Indiana jumped offside. When they jumped, he snapped the ball to the quarterback and he put his knee down. The defense. Watch him it's jump. See him snap the ball. Snap. Boy, is Kirk an alert center. That's the second time he. You know, that's, that's like the center averaging five yards of play. He's picked up 10 yards for Tennessee today by being alert and making that snap. So it was third and five. This might even call for a measurement. It's offside on the defense. Now, where is he going to put that ball down? This is very close. I want to measure. Aha. Uh -huh. He well, does want to measure. Well, he should have done that before they moved the third down chain. Yep. They should have looked, walked over to the sideline. Now, now you can't tell. He's got a first down. For where he spotted it, he gave him a first down. But the problem was the third down marker now, guys should not have moved. It's going to be our timeout for a measurement. One minute and 24 seconds remain in the third quarter. If you join us along the way, Tennessee led at the half, 21 to 10. Indiana came back with a touchdown and went for a two-point conversion and failed on that conversion. So it's 21-16. Is it the first down? It's the first down where he walked off those five uh, five yards. So he can get the he can get the little card in there. to emphasize it. Inches. Third inches. They're going to bring in Keith Davis as the tailback. The 28. Five of nine. Tennessee has been successful in similar situations. Third down. Just about a nine-man line. our headlinesman and he's out there indicating it's a first down. Well, he didn't have very far to go. He just surged and left him out. So a first down at the Tennessee 40. Tennessee's last possession. They had an excellent drive going, but their uh, outstanding tailback uh, lost the handle on the ball. Reggie Cobb for the second time today. Some discussion out there with officials right now. I don't know what it's about. Well, the clock is, isn't functioning or something. With a timer, with a timer, please put 13 seconds back on the clock. We should have one minute and 13 seconds left in the quarter. So the largest crowd in the history of the Peach Bowl, 58,737 looking on as the temperature appears to be dropping a bit here in Atlanta. Well, that was a big penalty there on that third down, third down situation where Indiana hit him back in that third and five and almost relatively gave him the first down with the penalty. Cleveland to the right, Woods to the left, tight end is in the game. First and ten play. This is Keith Davis trying to get outside. Found a bit of a crease. Oh, that's a tough, great, great run by Davis. And some bodies flying all over the place. Well, the thing is you see Davis do, and he does it well. On that outside sweep, he runs under control. Now watch him run under. Watch him run under control here for a while. He's under control, and when he sees daylight right there, watch him turn it on the extra bit of speed as he hits up to the hole. He's done an excellent job of reading the, the outside block there and cutting behind it as he turns up there to pick up that big yardage. Now I don't think we've seen this combination now in that offensive backfield. We're going to have Wilson and Howard both listed as fullbacks, and you mentioned. Oh, this is Howard. And he got about four yards. Well, now on that last Indiana drive for a touchdown, the Indiana offensive line was getting off the ball in a hurry. Now Tennessee's offensive line appears to be doing the same thing. Take a look at it coming right at you. The good surge of the offensive line. You see how they've gotten driven back off the line of scrimmage. When you're doing that, you wrap both arms around the ball to keep from fumbling. Of course, when you push him back after he's got that yard, he's, the umpired officials will mark that ball to the forward progress. I think Tennessee is going to allow the final seconds to tick away here in the third quarter. So at the end of three quarters of the Beach Bowl in Atlanta, Tennessee 21, Indiana 16. We'll be right back to Atlanta after these messages. Tennessee in possession. Let's single out this offensive line that's operating right now. Simons, Stewart, Galbraith, Kirk, Bruin. Reggie Cobb is back in at tailback to start the fourth quarter. William Howard, number 35, will be the fullback. Nate Middlebrooks will be the tight end. Thomas Woods and Vincent Moore 
Woods, number five. Moore, number ten, will be the wide receivers. Second down, six. Tennessee at the Indiana 40 as we start the fourth quarter. Well, Cobb juggled the ball. There goes a flag fly, and that usually means holding. Here's That's holding. Holding. Now that will nullify about a four-yard run Let's see, if we can, see if we can pick up the holding in there. Well, there's a lot of bodies around, rolling around, and the official obviously threw it because he threw the ball, threw the flag, and threw it in there very quick. That will be a big penalty now against Tennessee. Penalty becoming important here in the latter part of the third quarter, and early part of the fourth quarter. That's the fourth penalty called against Tennessee for a total of 30 yards. Look at look at the difference in that rushing yardage. 209 yards for Tennessee against Indiana's 48. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty, still second down. It will now be second down and 15. There will be. Now that was Cleveland who lined up a tailback. Now he's a slot back. Francis. Uh, Francis just plain missed a wide open Cleveland. I don't think he realized he had as much time as he had. Yeah. If he had got himself planted and delivered that ball, Cleveland was wide open. But because the pocket broke down, I think he felt he might have been pressured more than he was. If he had regained his uh, passing position, that would have been a big completion. Tennessee's been scoreless here in the second half. That's the first pass that Francis has not completed, Ed, in the second half. Well, he's had a great day. They've been doing a good job of reading and finding the seams and the zones of, of uh, Indiana's pass coverage. Now, Keith Davis is back in at tailback. Third and 15, Tennessee, 49-yard line of Indiana. Pass is complete, but well short of a first down as Willie Bates makes the tackle on Cleveland at the 40-yard line. Six yards shy of a first down. It was a gain of nine. It's going to be fourth down. A little bit of indecision on the part of the well, they're on the 40-yard line, so he may be giving some consideration to, to going for this on fourth down. But they're going to have to make a decision soon, otherwise the clock will be running down on them. Time left in the game, 14 minutes and a couple of seconds. Right now, we only have one football team on the field. Eh? Earlier, they, they we got had... A, they got a break, right, because the official did not wind the 25-second clock fast enough. The official's really unhappy out there at the time, timer. Bob Garman, the punter, this will be the first punt of the game for Tennessee, if he punts. Keith Davis now, mind you, is lined up as the short man. I think Tennessee is trying to get Indiana, perhaps, to jump offside. Boy, and surprisingly enough, Indiana had 12 men on the field, and their sideline coaches were screaming. One of them finally game. got off. On the offense, five yards down. Tennessee had snapped that ball earlier. They had that 12th man on the field again. Boy. Tony Buford is the only man back deep for Indiana. 13-33 left in the game. Delay. Five-yard down. Distance doesn't mean too much right now because Garmin can easily reach the end zone. I'm sure he wants to try and kick it out of bounds or hang it high. Buford at the 15 to the 17. Indiana will have possession, trailing by five with 13.20 left to play. A 30-yard punt, a three-yard return. We'll be back in Atlanta after these words. The stations may have missed a halftime break, so we're going to make that up following position number 26. Please stay in rotation. Indiana, first and 10. Indiana, 18-yard line. Thompson. Only a couple of yards. Dwayne Dow on the field. Hey, I've got a pal here. This is... The official dog of the volunteers. The volunteers have had a, an official dog in the early 50s provided by Mildred Brooks. This is Smokey number six. 
He's a blue tick coonhound, five years old. What do you think of the game so far, pal? Uh, Ray, I agree totally. <laughs> well, obviously, obviously he doesn't like Dwayne. He didn't give Dwayne a kiss down there. <laughs> Second down, eight. Tennessee, 20. Little roll out. That's a first down. Out around the 30-yard line, Ernie Jones is having yet another great day for Indiana. Well, he's a fine receiver. You see team release off the line of scrimmage. Tennessee in the outside zone. He goes down, makes a little bit cut to the outside. Ball is delivered. First down. Just pitch and catch. How easy can it be? So Indiana picks up the first down. Jones has caught six passes for 136 yards. Whew. First and ten Hoosiers. 12.40 left in the game. Tennessee leading by five. Thompson. Good speed. Out of bounds. Where will they mark it? Just short of the 50 around the 48-yard line of Indiana. Keith DeLong shoved him out of bounds. The shot of Tennessee bench over there. They kind of realize the momentum is just switching a little bit right now. Not too pleased and too happy about the situation. And just almost feel within the crowd now. The Tennessee crowd has kind of settled down a little bit, Ray. Buford is split left. Jones is split right. Back up, please. Fake. Oh. That won't happen too often. Thompson dropping the ball. Took his eye off that pass. He was looking for where those defensive backs and linebackers were. Just as it got to him, he wanted to run before he caught it. Most important thing, he had to concentrate and catch the ball. At that time, he was concerned about making some extra yardage running-wise, and that's what will happen occasionally. The men protecting Schnell, Simons, Ratke, Finney, Schrader, Moore, the interior lineman, plus the tight end, Jordan. Second and 10, Indiana 48. Might be audible. He might go to the outside receiver at the top there. Pretty good time. There's Thompson. He's down to the 48-yard line of Tennessee. DeLong. We mentioned Keith DeLong's name a lot. His dad here, Steve, the, the former great at Tennessee. I'm sure enjoy watching his offspring participate. Well, Keith is had 125 tackles this year. He's the big play leader on the Tennessee team. A couple of recovered fumbles, a couple of sacks, interceptions. Junior with another year to go. Third down six. Jones is wide to the right side, the wide side of the field. Jones in motion. Fake to Thompson. A catch by Jones. What a receiver he is adjusting to the ball, this time at the Tennessee 35-yard line. Boy, that's a great catch, Ray. One of the most difficult things is to catch a low pick. Watch him bend those knees and go down. Watch the knees, how he goes down. See how he uses his body and the knees to go down to catch that ball? A lot of receivers will try to bend at the waist to catch it. This young man went down there and used his body and bent those knees and got down to catch it. That was a great catch there by Ernie Jones. A 17-yard gain and a first down at the Tennessee 34 and a half. 11 and a half minutes to play. Seven for 153. Thompson. Oh, here comes a reverse. Here comes Jones. He needs a block. He got a screen block. And that's a first down at the 20 yard line with Bill Mallory and his staff pulling out all stops. Well, a great call by George Ballou, the offensive coordinator, coming with that play at the right time, about the 35 yard line. Tennessee kind of thinking they're going to run the ball. Great call by Ballou, the offensive coordinator. We must keep in mind that Indiana, following its last touchdown, that was in the third quarter, went for a two point conversion, which would have moved them to within three, but they failed. So they need a touchdown to go ahead. There it is again. You see it at a different angle. It looks like it's almost close to face mask. Oh. First down play. There goes the fullback, Pulse. Schnell faked the pitch to Thompson, who went wide. And Tom Pulse, the big senior fullback from Aliquippa, brought down by McCray. And the other thing Schnell did, he faked almost like a bootleg. He was checking the backside of Tennessee's defensive people to see whether they were covering him or not. Six-yard game to the Tennessee 14. Ten and a half minutes left to play. Allen 
is out wide to the right. Kenny Allen. Two tight ends. Thompson. Whoa. Tough defense by the Volunteers. Who led that charge? That seems the last man up. Well, number 90 was in on the play. We know that. That's Marion Hobby, the sophomore defensive lineman from Irondale, Alabama. Down underneath it, Keith DeLong, number oh, 33. Yeah. He met Tom Pulse, the lead block. It was an isolated play. They're trying to have Pulse lead the play in there. DeLong went right underneath him and made that play. What a great play by that linebacker. This is going to be a third down and a little more than three for a first down. At the Tennessee 13 with 940 left to play and Tennessee leading 21-16. Two wide receivers this time. Cornerbacks got a blitz. Short of the first down by one yard at the 11. And there again was Keith DeLong. But Peppers, number eight, the cornerback, slid down in there and really forced that play back into DeLong and the rest of them. And a cornerback blitz called anticipating the run. He forced it right down inside. Now, it appears that Indiana will try to move within two. Pete Stojanovic, we know he can kick one for distance because uh, earlier today he set a beach ball record with a 52-yarder. This will be a 29-yarder out of a hold by Tim Jordan, the tight end, from about the left hash mark. Down, Jordan, the tight end. I'm glad I said it appears that he is going to try a field goal. <laughs> well, that's the kind of play that comes off the drawing board. They looked at whatever Tennessee's adjustment might be. They blocked it perfectly. And Jordan, the tight end, who is the holder, took it right into the end zone for the touchdown. Good call. Right. So for the first time today, Indiana has the lead. Take a look at it. There's a direct yeah. snack to him. The second the time. First out. to the outside. They, they blocked out and kicked down, and there was an open gap in there. Tennessee didn't have a gap covered. Now, ten, Indiana took a timeout. They want to talk over whether they want to go for one or whether they want to go for two. Well, earlier, they, uh, they looked like they were going to go for one. Remember, then they took the, the uh, placement the unit off. They, They'll go for two. They'll, they'll go for two, I would think. All right. We'll know when we return to Atlanta after these messages. 200 cities in 20 countries on three continents. So when you need to fly, look to us. Indiana going for two. Who has it? Interception. Is that McDaniel? No, uh, no extra point. Interception by McDaniel. McDaniel prevents a two-point conversion. We have a one-point game. Oh, I, we need a little breather. 22-21, Indiana leading. We'll be back after these words. That's the score. That's how much time remains. And Tennessee is about to get the ball. Bill Mallory is stuffing chewing gum into his mouth. <laughs> Pete Stojanovic will kick off. Twice today, Bill Mallory and staff have elected to go for a two-point conversion, and both times were denied. Hence, a one-point lead for the Hoosiers, 22-21. But obviously thinking there was a two-point conversion, at least put them a uh, Tennessee kick the field goal. They'd just be playing for a tie. They're trying to get three points up. Well, our capacity crowd... Uh, Wondering what will happen in the last eight minutes and 41 seconds. Cleveland is in the middle, flanked by Poles and Davis. This will be Cleveland at the seven. Good return out to about the 30. Again, the touchdown. The last touchdown. Comes off of it. He could have walked it in through there himself. See all the daylight there? We were kind of second guessing with a great play by McDaniel, though defensively. All right, first down. Francis after taking the handoff. And he gets about three to four yards. Dwayne Dow on the field. Yes, Ray, we're at the part of Atlanta Stadium where Indiana and Tennessee are meeting. The fans are sitting almost together. Here for Tennessee, you're going to come back? 
Yeah, they're gonna come back. Just give them a chance. They'll come back. You still think you can win? Yeah. But you're from Indiana. Right. I'm from Indiana. They ain't gonna win. They ain't got no chance. When you were way down, did you think you'd come back the way you have? Indiana's the second half team. They'll always come back. Second down, eight. Cobb gets a grudging two to two and a half yards. And so now, Jeff Francis and company will be faced Every time a third down comes up now, no matter which team has the football, it becomes increasingly important. Especially with a one-point ball game. If you remember, Tennessee was ahead 21 to 10 at halftime. Third down. Over, a little over six to go. One running back. Three wide receivers. Howard is the only sub. the hands of the intended receiver. Now, one of the reasons that pass was thrown a bit high was because Brad Money was in position to deflect the ball, and I think Francis had to throw it not quite in the same arc that he would have liked. Right, and he threw it leaning back away from the line of scrimmage instead of going forward to the line of scrimmage. That'll force that ball to sail a little bit when you're falling away. Second punt of the day for Tennessee. The last one was 30 yards. Tony Buford is the return man for Indiana. The last three Peach Bowls have been decided by three or fewer points. Buford at the 23. Out to the 35. Flag down. A flag down. With seven minutes and one second remaining. This, this penalty will probably back Indiana up. There's a clipping penalty. Oh boy. On the return. By Indiana. A 39-yard punt. A 12-yard return. We'll be right back to Atlanta after these words. Snell. Take the Thompson. Was it a catch by Allen? No. Says the official on the spot. Kenny Allen thought it was. Terry McDaniel was defending. Well, Indiana certainly elected not to play anything conservative here, going to the air on first down. Both officials from both both angles ruled it a non-completion without any hesitation, so it obviously was low throwing ball that bounced into there. They certainly did. Now, well, I think Bill realized that he has to get something going to get out of this hole, otherwise they're going to have great field position. Now, Ernie Jones has not played the last few moments. We're trying to find out why. Second and ten. Fake to Thompson. And Tim Jordan, who scored that touchdown on a fake field goal, could not hold on to the ball. That would have been good for a first down at the 25-yard line. Now Indiana is faced with a third and 10 from the Indiana 13. Well, that was a big play there, a big drop ball. Again, they've been very uh, aggressive coming out of this hole. And I would assume they'll probably put it up in the air again on this third down because they haven't been pressured or blitzed. Might be a good time for Tennessee to go after. All right, third and 10. To the right. Darrell Eddings to the left. That was Powell, the fullback, went up to hear the call from the quarterback. Down he goes. Now every receiver was covered. David Johnson, junior defensive lineman, and Brian Kimbrough. Two junior defensive players in there looking downfield. No one's open. There you can see Johnson. Now you see Kimbrough come in on top of him. Big sack. Tennessee should come out of this with great field position. Third sack by the Volunteers. Dan Straczynski standing in the end zone to punt. They may be coming after him. He's had one block today. Thomas Woods to receive the punt. Here they come. Fair catch, but at the 41-yard line of Indiana. We'll be back after these words from your local station. By a single point, the tailback is Davis. Fake to Davis. Francis. 
Oh, that was thrown into a crowd. I think he wanted to hit his. Who want to hit there? Did he want to? Well, they were trying to set up. A, they were trying to set up a screen, Ray. And one of the Indiana players recognized it. They spent a lot of time working against the screens, but Tennessee is known for that. And he grabbed the receiver and threw him down. There really was no one. Then the receiver got back up, and of course by then it was too late for him to get the ball to him. Now second down and ten. Tickets are available for that East-West Shrine game and for the Senior Bowl, and we hope that you'll be there in person. Cobb is back in at tailback. That cornerback's coming over there. From... Pass complete, short of a first down, Thomas Woods. Gain, six yards. So a great job of reading the defense there. The cornerback was put to that side, and he went right to that side and made the completed pass. Now third and four. 540 left and the clock running. Howard is in at fullback. Cobb stays in at tailback. Two tight ends, one wide receiver. Out of Owen, probably to Cobb. Reggie Cobb to the 27 yard line. Brought down by Walt Harris. Tennessee needs only a field goal to take the lead. Five minutes and 11 seconds left to play. And as soon as those chains move, the clock will start again. And they're in field goal range already. senior from Coral Gables, Florida. The first play is made by Andre Hall. Watch him blitzing from the outside. See Andre Hall blitzing right there, which messes the play up. Now the other player comes in and makes it. Time. Van Waiters backing him up, comes up and makes tape. But Andre Hall caused that collision with his blitz. Four yards lost. Second down, 14 at the Indiana 31. <laughs> Give to the fullback. is going to be third down and between nine and ten for a first down. Now this will be an interesting call, Ray. Do you play conservative and get a few more yards forward to have a safe chance for a field goal? Or do you go wide open and take a chance on maybe an interception and turn the ball over? The new tight end in the game is John Rollins replacing number three Middlebrooks. I think they'll be wide open. I think they'll throw the ball. Three wide receivers, one running back, and that's Howard on third and nine. Great protection. There goes Francis. And he is very close for a first down at the 17-yard line. Jeff Francis of Mount Prospect, Illinois, has had a great game. Again, a our good time. job. We're going to measure. Our going time. back, taking his time, looking around. Nobody's open. Sees the opening spot. He knows where he has to go to get the first down. Look at him dive forward to get as much yard as he possibly can. It's the spot of the ball is important right now. Jeff Francis, good-looking junior quarterback. There's another shot at it. He's back. Nobody's open downfield. Good job. Now he's coming forward, and he moves just forward far enough to pick up the first down. He got it. At the 17-yard line, three minutes and 31 seconds left to play. Would you guess here, Ed, that the Tennessee strategy would be to to keep the ball on the ground to get that time down as close to zero as possible? Well, I think they'll want to try to get the ball into the end zone and just continue mixing up their play. I don't think they'll play a real conservative because there's no guarantee that you'll get the field goal. 25 first downs by the Volunteers. Cobb to the nine-yard line. Seven tough yards by Reggie Cobb. Boy, watch Cobb come up through this hole. He just explodes when he hits the hole. Good offensive line block there, and he breaks right off of that. Good job by number 63, Phil Stewart, in there on that block. He explodes off the line and takes it down through. He's a strong 205-pounder. He runs like about a 230-pounder. 
20 carries for Cobb, 137 yards, one touchdown. Davis, number 28, has replaced Cobb at tailback on second down and two and a half for a first down. Oh, that was Charles Wilson, who is short of a first down. He gained at the most a yard to the eight, where he's met by Walt Harris, the Detroit, Michigan defensive lineman. Time left, two minutes and 20 seconds, and the clock running. Good job by the Indian linebacker there, Ray. He recognized that the lead back had cheated up a little bit. He figured he was going to run, in that, run into that hole, and he stepped up in there and made the play before they could get any yardage out of it. Two minutes and six seconds left in the clock running. Howard will be the fullback. Cobb will be the tailback. Third down and two at the nine-yard line of Indiana. Here goes Cobb. And he is into the end zone for his second touchdown. So Tennessee scored us in the second half until right now, back in the lead, 27 to 22. Boy, the thing that Cobb does now, when he hits that hole, he's not running sideways. Watch him square himself up. See how square he is right there? you got to get in there, tackle, Final tackle him low. Oh, run real Final square. Two. You can't tackle him from the That's side the with a side Final. shot. And I'll tell you something. William Howard threw a tremendous block. Take another look now. It's very tough to, to tackle a block uh, back when he comes into the hole where he squares himself up. See how he is right to the hole right there? Now the tackler almost has to hit him head up before he can take him down. Otherwise, he'll just bounce right off of him. Now, of what value is it to Tennessee to go for a two-point conversion? Well, it would make it 29-22 and would make... That would, uh, that would force Indiana, if they score, yeah. to go for the two-point right. conversion. Right. Boy, what a day by that young man is right. Reggie Cobb. You're going to see a lot of him in the next three years. He's a red-shirted freshman. One minute and 52 seconds remaining. That's the first time out taken by Tennessee. Well, one thing about Cobb, the mayor of Knoxville better be careful. He, this young man might be the mayor there. Hometown boy. Uh -huh. Indiana went for two twice and failed. Let's see how Tennessee makes out. They've been successful four out of six times this year, Ray. Francis looking, looking, and broken down. Broken down by Brad Money, the junior linebacker from Midland, Michigan. Well, I have a hunch that... Uh, this last a minute and 52 seconds could contain an awful lot of excitement. We'll be right back after these messages. 27-22 in favor of Tennessee. One minute and 52 seconds remaining. Reggie Cobb with his second touchdown of the game. He's had a brilliant day. And would I hey, one of the toughest sure? decisions that we're faced with up here in our Misley television booth is what players to vote for as MVP on the offense and MVP on the defense. I well, know one thing. We're looking at two great fourth quarter teams right now. Indiana's outscored their opponents 80 to 42. Tennessee's outscored their opponents 118 to 47. Both right. fourth quarter teams. For the first time today, Ernie Jones is not the deep man. This is Kenny Allen. We think Jones sustained a slight injury. Almost got to the outside. Now we're going to take this second, this break right here, 60 seconds for any station who may have missed a halftime position. The score is 27 22 in favor of Temple Ball at their 28 yard line. And, and it's really unfortunate from an Indiana point of view that their tremendous offensive weapon, Ernie Jones, has not been able to play in the last few series. We have not been able to find out exactly what type of injury. But we did notice, though, that he was trying to keep loose and warm up as if he might have had a, a slight muscle pull in one of his legs. Yeah, it looked like it was either in a, in a calf or just the lower part of the thigh. I don't think it's a serious ankle injury or a knee injury. It looked like it might have been something of just enough that he can't run full speed. Of course, that's a problem you have once in a while when you have uh, those sprinters. But we've got it. Uh, last minute 46 ought to be exciting. Indiana can look up there and realize that they scored a touchdown. If they're ahead, probably win the football game. Now, Indiana will have Kenny Allen, who is a fine wide receiver, in place of Jones. 
first and ten. Indiana from the Indiana 28-yard line. And Indiana only has one timeout left, Ray. By golly, that's right. Ooh. Well, let's see what the defensive strategy is. Do uh, you think they'll stay and stay in some sort of a prevent-type zone defense? Well, I think they'll play a little bit loose, but uh, they've been pretty aggressive all year. They'll be playing three deep zone so they don't get behind them because they realize they have to score a touchdown. Field goal doesn't hurt them. Snell getting pressure. This is Allen. He was not able to get out of bounds. He picked up only about six yards before Cedric Klein, the sophomore safety from Loudoun, Tennessee, made the stop. So hurry up offense, no huddle. 125 left in county. Second down five. Batted back. That was Marion Hobby, the big defensive lineman from Irondale, Alabama. And he's only a sophomore. Right. Take a look at him. You see the pressure. Great drop back pass. Held back. That's a slide to the outside. Now watch Hobby right there jump up and get that hand up. Six foot three, arm extension and jumping off the ground. He's up there about seven foot. Schnell, 18 of 32, 218 yards, a touchdown, one interception. This is a third and five at the Indiana 33. A minute 19 left. 27, 22, Tennessee. Intercepted. Charles Kimbrough, the junior linebacker, picks off the Schnell pass, and Tennessee has the ball with a minute 10 remaining, and Indiana has only one timeout remaining to try and stop the clock. We'll return to Atlanta. We're taking this 60-second break for any station who may have missed a halftime position. The score is 27-22. Tennessee. First and 10, Tennessee, 38-yard line of Indiana. Tennessee, of course, knows that Indiana has only one timeout remaining. And a couple more snaps would probably take care of it. is continuing to run. Indiana has not yet taken its final timeout. In fact, a couple of players from the opposing teams just gave each other what we would call as low fives to indicate if, if I don't see after the game, good game, partner. Good friendly rivalry. Good, well-played, hard-hitting, clean football game, Ray. With 30 seconds left, for some stations, we should tell you that Tennessee uh, knows that Indiana can only stop the clock one more time. Now we're down to 20 seconds. And uh, that, for all intents and purposes, is the end of this football game. Indiana can no a longer timeout. call the timeout. Indiana, no, wait a minute. They didn't that's call. That's their last timeout. Okay, they called their last timeout. So they have to snap. One more timeout. They have to snap it one more one time. One more time. In, in the event, and I have been guilty of this many times, Ed, I forget to give credit to some of the people who helped us throughout the game. So to our statistician, uh, Rick Baker, nice to work with you again, Rick. Thank you. And to Preston Scott, it's nice to work with you again. Thank you, our spotter for today. Sounds like a familiar name. Yeah. And uh, to Dwayne and uh, to you, Ed, a rather uh, about 24 hours late in saying officially Happy New Year to you, to you, Ed Biles and Dwayne Dow. It's been a good ball game. There yeah. is the trophy, and there's a smiling and now relaxed Johnny Majors. There is Bill Mallory, who has taken this Indiana football team so very far. And very interesting how the important part that special teams play in game. Indiana on a fake field goal get the go-ahead touchdown, but they turn right around on their special teams and commit a penalty, put them in poor field position, and gave Tennessee the field position to get that go-ahead touchdown. Just amazing little things, how often little, things. little things get involved in special teams. But it's been uh, a great Beach Bowl, a sellout last year when Virginia Tech defeated North Carolina State at the gun. And a great game today as Tennessee came from behind after leading most of the way and then falling behind. Well, the Indiana folks will forget about the Tennessee loss. They'll remember that the first time in 103 years they beat both Ohio State and Michigan in the same year. They beat them individually, but 
103 years since they had beaten Ohio State and Michigan the same year. So that's going to be a very happy thought for them rather than this loss to Tennessee. And looking over the roster, both schools have much to build on. Many, many underclassmen playing here today. Now, the, barring the penalty, the final snap of the game. And the final seconds will tick away the tremendous throng of volunteer fans who followed their team from Tennessee and the Indiana Hoosier fans who came here in great number and in fact the allotment of tickets to Indiana was sold out the 4th of December. The final score Tennessee 27 Indiana 22. We'll be back to Atlanta Fulton County Stadium right after these words. Well uh, Dwayne this was a, a great football from any standpoints. Uh, a unique uh, two football teams very unique. Indiana had outscored their corners to, two to one in the fourth quarter. Over scored more than two to one against ours. Thought we were going to make a, a runaway, but we didn't because Indiana is a fighting football team, and I know we can be proud of them. But I talked to our football team a long time. We've come from behind five times in the fourth quarter, and I definitely believe they're made of the right stuff. How did it feel to have the whole state of Tennessee here at Atlanta Stadium back of you? Well, we've got a great state. There are a lot of great states in this station, but none better than Tennessee, and nobody has better fans than we do. And you folks that aren't there, I know you're pulling for us, too. There's nothing like Tennessee football fans. Thank you, Johnny Majors. Back to Ray and Ed. Okay, Dwayne, thank you so much. And uh, some thoughts from you now. This is our first chance to, to work together, and it's nice to have the uh, viewpoint of a longtime coach. And I'm going to ask you your final thoughts right after we leave Atlanta for these brief messages. As the capacity crowd, 58,737, the largest, by the way, in the, the history of the Beach Bowl, win their way out of Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. If you're wondering about the roar, as Johnny Majors uh, looks at that very handsome trophy awarded to Tennessee. The Tennessee, uh, we, we hope that you folks will stay with us because we'll get a chance to point out a few things that transpired today uh, through the eyes of our expert analyst, longtime coach Ed Biles, as the Tennessee fans start their celebration. Uh, the Tennessee players, most of them, are now gathered around and behind Johnny Majors, their head coach. And I have a slight hunch there'll be some celebrating here in Atlanta tonight, Ed. Well, they have a victory party scheduled here, and I'm sure it'll be a big victory party. Ray, I just thought this was an outstanding ball game. When you talk about bowl games, they're supposed to be fun. This bowl game was fun for all the teams that participated. Of course, there has to be one winner and one loser. But from a viewer's standpoint, we saw everything that you want to see. We saw some excellent running. Cobb, the fine young freshman redshirt, did an outstanding job of running the football. We certainly seen some great passing. Snell and Francis, both of them did an outstanding job reading defenses, a lot of audibles. You saw modern-day football, a blend of the running game, a blend of the passing game. We also some outstanding plays on special teams. You saw a coaching staff that took advantage of looking at the films. Uh, Indiana off a fake field goal situation. You just don't devise that during the course of the game. That meant that their special teams coach had looked at a lot of Tennessee's film, realized that on certain situations, Tennessee lines up in this particular rush against the field goal. And there was a gap that they left open. So they were ready to audible to that play if it was there and available. You saw great special teams play that way. We certainly saw some some young kickers with good, strong legs. So I think we just saw an outstanding ball game. The winning touchdown was scored by Reggie Cobb, his second touchdown of the game. That's uh, the young redshirt freshman quarterback. And here it is again. Well, I, the thing I like about Cobb is when he hits that hole, he is just really squared up, and you're not going to tackle him from the side. You're going to have to meet him head on. Otherwise, he's going to run right through you. Anyone trying to hit him from the side can't get their arms wrapped around him. You have to hit him head up. And a lot of defensive backs, small defensive backs. Here's another shot at it where you can see what I've been talking about, how he squares up right at that hole. Now, watch the side tackle right here. You can't wrap the arms around because he's still going forward and gets it into the end zone. Just an outstanding looking uh, running back that Cobb. And speaking of Cobb, Ed, we have Cobb carrying 21 times for 146 yards. Now, that, that, that's a pretty good day's work. And, of course, the two touchdowns that we mentioned. Now, one thing that Jeff Francis did, the quarterback from Tennessee, that I think uh, is worthy of pointing out, as he completed 20 of 26 passes for 225 yards and two touchdowns, he divided 
his receivers seven different ways. Woods, Miller, McGuire, Cobb, Cleveland, Davis, and Howard, with Miller grabbing off five for 78 yards, including a touchdown. So the passing attack of Tennessee, in addition to the great running, was uh, outstanding. Well, and again, I think when you, start, when you talk about a quarterback completing 20 out of 26 passes, that means he was well prepared. He knew how to read the defenses and who to go to. When it's spread out like that, that means that whatever adjustment Indiana made or wherever they were moving their linebackers one side or the other, he read that and would go to the open receiver or the toughest receiver for the linebackers or the cover people from Indiana to get to, which again gets back to coaching and preparation. Now let's take a look at Indiana. Dave Schnell completed 18 of 33 passes for 218 yards. He threw for a touchdown. He had two intercepted, although the last one, of course, was in desperation circumstances, and uh, that's going to happen in any game. Now, we should mention that Ernie Jones, the great wide receiver of Indiana, was unable to play about the last three or four series, including a couple of very critical times when they very much needed him. Now, we saw him as the Tennessee team left the field at the end of the game, or the Indiana team left the field at the end of the game. We saw him limping, so he sustained some sort of a leg injury. We tried every way we knew how to find out the type of injury, the extent of injury we're unable to. But Jones, despite having to miss the last several series, caught seven passes for 150 yards. Indiana football, we talked about Tennessee football. It's exactly what we saw. Two football schools that have good ground fundamentals. Let's go downstairs and see what Dwayne Dow has down there right now. Okay. Dwayne? Gentlemen, I'm with Mike Kelly, outside linebacker, the Volunteers. Hey, I thought you guys were going to win this game by 50 points in the second quarter. Well, I tell you what, we jumped on them, and uh, well, one interesting fact is that they don't quit, and that's what they didn't do, so made an interesting game. Now, when they when Indiana went ahead 22-21, what was going through the sidelines and over in the bench area for Tennessee? Well, our, our thoughts were to hold them three downs, because I think there were seven minutes left. Hold them, get the ball back for our offense, because our offense has been moving it all day. So that and, and score. What a thrill it must be to play football at the University of Tennessee with these wild fans. Well, I'm telling you what, they're the greatest fans in the country. Greatest fans in the country. Love it. Love it. Good luck, Mike. Appreciate it. All right. Well, well, we'll have a, a little bit of a musical background and a bit of a serenade. I think I'm running out of television cord here <laughs> by the University of Tennessee band. And uh, I don't like to make any mistakes at this point. And we had that touchdown that put Indiana ahead for the first time in this game off a fake field Almost goal. Almost an audible off a field goal situation. If the hole is there, we go ahead and run it. If it's not, we audible out of the fake and kick the field goal. Again, that's special teams coaching, right? All right, now, you had mentioned earlier of how much a penalty had to do with the outcome of this game. And Indiana did get the ball toward the end of the game. They were backed up, what, around their own 13-yard line, was it not? That's exactly correct. We talked about scoring off that special team play. Now they, they forced... Uh, themselves to uh, Tennessee to punt. Now they get it. They get a clip on the punt, which forces them back to the 13 yard line. In fact, if you go back to the course of the game, there were several times during the course of the ball game that they made penalties that hurt themselves. Several times, uh, Kirk was responsible. He should get credit for 10 yards of offense today, the center for Tennessee, because he snapped the ball when Indiana jumped offside. Those are little things that go into the game. Again, that was a coaching point. His coaches always told him that, hey, if they jump offside, snap the ball, quarterback will catch it and just put his knee down as they did. We'll take that five yards. We don't care whether the rest of our players move or not. In your years in coaching, uh, at both at the college and the professional level, have you noticed an increasing emphasis on special teams play? Oh, I think going back to George Allen, who really put some emphasis on it, yes. Uh, right now, everyone has special teams coaches. They spend more time. They spend much more time uh, on special teams. Used to be they do it at the end of practice. Now they wind up taking part during practice, sometimes saying, okay, hey, we got a situation. Let's punt the ball, make our punt team good. There is so much more emphasis because everybody realizes uh, that that's 20% of the game. You get two reels of offense, two reels of defense, real special team. You're going to see some great special teams play out in the East-West. The Shrine Bowl game is going to be coming up Saturday, January the 6th. And also the Senior Bowl game on January the 23rd. You'll see great special team players there because they invite the best players in the nation to those games. Moore and Jones of Indiana, McDaniel of Tennessee, will be in that East-West game, the Shrine game, on January 16th. That's two weeks from today. And then again on January 23rd for the Senior Bowl in Milwaukee.
Mobile and tickets are available for both of those games so I hope that you'll get a chance to be there in person. Ed, closing thought from you? Well I think it was just an outstanding game. It's just a shame that one team has to lose. When you get to a bowl you've had a, had a great year. Good job by both teams and both staffs. This game has been brought to you in part by Benadryl. Same full strength without prescription from Park Davis. Well from the uh, Atlanta Fulton County Stadium which was sold out for this Peach Bowl today for Ed Biles for Dwayne Dow and for all of us at Ms. Lou we say to all of you in behalf of our executive producer Vic Piano our executive in charge of production Bill Schwing our producer Bob Davis our director Roger Schwing our coordinating producer Brad Fuss for all of you folks Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This is Ray Scott saying thank you and good evening from Atlanta. Anna against Tennessee. The Volunteers in the first quarter. Jeff Francis is going 45 yards to Anthony Miller. And this one was 14 to 3 balls. They extended that lead to 21 to 3 before just about halftime when Dave Schnell for the Hoosiers hits Ernie Jones and he takes it in for a 43-yard touchdown. Indiana coming back. It's 21 to 10 at the half. 22. The Volunteers wrap up the season at 10, 2, and 1. To high school hockey action this afternoon. Well, a record Peach Bowl crowd jammed into Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium today to see the Big Ten against the SEC. Indiana meeting Tennessee. First quarter, 7-3 Tennessee. Jeff Francis for the balls drops. Goes deep to Anthony Miller. He blows past Michael Dumas. 45-yard touchdown. 14-3 Volunteers. In the second quarter, it's Francis again. Jeff finds Terrence Cleveland this time. Corner ends all touchdown. 21-3 Tennessee. Later in the second quarter, here come the Indiana Hoosiers. Dave Schnell rolling to his left, looking deep and lays one right in the hands of Ernie Indiana Jones. Sorry, Ernie. 43-yard touchdown, 21-10 Hoosiers trail. Third quarter, Anthony Thompson, 12-yard touchdown run. The Hoosier fans love it. The Volunteers don't. Their lead is only five. Then in the fourth quarter, Indiana setting up for a field goal. Yes, again. The holder, Tim Jordan, says, I'm going to take matters in my own hands. Untouched in the end zone. Indiana leads 22-21 with six minutes left to go. But the balls drive down to the nine-yard line. Then freshman Reggie Cobb powers his way in for his second TD of the game. 27-22 Tennessee. Hoosier coach Bill Mallory knows he's in trouble. Yes, he does. Last chance for Indiana. And again, it's Schnell. In a desperation type of situation. Has the time over the middle. Picked off by Charles Kimbrough. And the Tennessee Vols hang on for a 27-22 win as Johnny Majors gets, well, well, they tried to give him a, 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 an A-1 right off the field, but he'll take it. They got to work on that, on that hoisting the coach next to the spring. Tennessee wins it by five.